Hi guys. Good evening. Finally, my wishes and a lot of your your you people's demands have finally come true. I have taken the risk of doing a podcast even though my electricity goes away in in between a live stream even though sometimes my wifi goes away sometimes between the live streams. Today we are going to take all those ris- risks. We are going to be khatro ke khiladi and today joining us is one of our uh, pretty regular viewers. but he also sends us those mysterious uh, papers on casteism in uh, uh, about any sociological topic which uh, break the myths created by the comi academia but interestingly he is part of the comi academia but he is not a comi himself he is almost basically a hindutvadi socialist uh, sociologist but i'll let him introduce himself uh, but he is about to finish his phd and we'll get into a bit of his bio but Why can't you see his face and why won't uh, I tell you his name is because you all know that our uh, academia or at least uh, liberal arts academia is basically an abrahamic faith where the where, where apostasy disbelievers are very looked down upon and uh, might lose their lives metamor- 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 metaphorically or lose their academic life so he has to stay hidden just like ex muslim sahil he is a current sociologist not sahil and uh, our basic topic today will be uh, mainly why bengal might be, can be called uh, the most casteist society in uh, or the most casteist state in india and why kolkata's uh, kolkata also suffers from casteism to a large extent but in ways that people don't generally see and therefore construe that bengalis or even the elite comi bengalis are not really casteist or casteism doesn't uh, exist in bengal but in what ways does it ex- exist okay and how does it still affect negatively affect bengal we will get into those things and also a bit of uh, current politics uh, let's see if any anyone is asking anything interesting important okay yeah so refresh your uh, windows guys because uh, it has to refresh or otherwise you won't understand that it's uh, started the live stream has started okay so now here is dr christoph lizelot also known as dr mysterious sociologist who often joins our chat as well hello christoph lizelot hi nirajan um i'd like to tell you that i'm actually ex muslim sahil uh... <laughs> no no he's not <laughs> we are going to get sued because of this <laughs> okay okay so uh, thanks for inviting me on this um, i would say podcast unique podcast um, <laughs> something that um, your daily viewers and m- myself as a daily viewer i'm looking forward to um, participating in and thanks for me ma- always making your sessions interactive whether through chat or you know in this mm. manner um what uh, i would like to tell the viewers today is that i have taught sociology for a considerable period of time i have um, studied the subject since i was 16 years old so i am let's say i i kind of think in terms of sociological theories uh, sociology mm. is my bread and butter so to speak mm. um, but sadly the way it is taught in india and abroad it has not done justice to its roots which right. was actually based in statistical analyses and right. uh, kind of uh, theoretical understanding of social trends hmm. that's the exact op- the exact opposite of that is happening today right so let let us try and bring that back there let's hmm. see if i can help the uh, audience to understand how our analyses can be uh, fruitful in that yeah. direction yeah uh let's just begin with some basics why sociology why do we need sociology and uh, if at all sociology uh, is defunded like i used to dream of uh, will that be a good or a bad thing for society do we need sociology today we would need a more classical version of sociology in my opinion acha which was uh, practiced by people like durkheim weber so okay. if you look at durkheim's uh, most influential works we said right Hmm. he proved something that was brilliant so he so one would think suicide has something to do with your physical uh, psychological uh, problems right? right but durkheim showed that every society has a social suicide rate Achoo. which means that if you look at the suicide rates in india hmm. and if you look at the suicide rates in pakistan if you look at suicide rates in singapore or malaysia 
Japan, whatever. There are different suicide rates in different countries, which vary more or less in a similar range. Like for India, let's say there are 100 suicides in a year. Hmm. There would be something close to that range every year. Yeah. So this was kind of where he challenged a psychological notion of suicide. He showed that society, oh. religious yeah. ideology, marital status, hmm. these things have an effect on suicide. That kind right. of that level of sophisticated uh, statistical analysis. Like look That's at right. Max Weber. Max Weber studied the his the history of religions. Of course, hmm. he was you know using British uh, data and also yeah. there are some problems in his yeah. work, but. The fact that he was able to kind of understand why Britain and Western Europe were capitalistic and not Eastern Europe or Asia. Yeah. These kind of, you know, big, big questions that hmm. sociology is to ask. Hmm. People have stopped asking it. Right, right. So sociology needs to be partially defunded, in my opinion. Hmm. We should stop opening sociology departments every 10 miles. Sociology departments should be select they right. should do good work only mm. if you're not based on your credentials because i have heard i've seen people from harvard and uh, god knows other you know oxford and cambridge doing absolute rubbish in terms of their work mm. and getting to uh, you know having good academic positions mm. um, apart from you know apart from these people i think we should have more meaningful sociological uh, research, which can help us understand quite a bit, which can help mm. us more importantly, de debunk myths. And that is right. something you and I are trying to do today yeah. itself uh, yeah. in the podcast. Yeah. We're trying to debunk a long held myth hmm. that there is no caste in Bengal or right. there is little casteism in Bengal. Yeah. So uh, in what ways does casteism exist in Bengal and how much of it is deliberate as in by casteism we usually uh, imagine a situation where an upper caste person is is uh, behaving badly towards a lower caste person directly in the middle of the street or not, not letting him enter a certain place or sell, or telling him shoo go away go away don't don't touch me what kind of casteism uh, exists in bengal so you would think that uh, bengalis who talk about black lives matter and uh, the war in vietnam and the war in iraq and all these other uh, what hashtag issues of the 70s right that back then there were yeah. no hashtags there were global <laughs> yeah. movements right right the global left uh, yeah. anyway so um these people would care so much about the plight of uh dalits about the plight of schedule castes and schedule tribes in their own states uh in their own backyard so to speak right look at the sandesh kali issue um mm. recently yeah. If you look at the people who are protesting about Sandesh Khali, hmm. those women belong mostly to the scheduled castes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The scheduled caste commission actually came here. If you look at yeah, yeah. every panchayat election, every local body election, hmm. every local body election sees either Muslims or scheduled castes or scheduled tribes die. You yeah. will not see a Chatterjee, Banerjee, Mukherjee, Roy, yeah. uh, these never. kind of people die. Almost you never. You will see Bondol, Dolui, Parui. Yeah. Uh, these kind of caste people die, right? Even yeah. among Muslims, yeah. to be fair. Yeah. So, the, the Pasmanda Muslims, not, not Ashraf Muslims. Pasmanda either. Muslims, not the Ashrafs, yeah. Uh, yeah. who are holding positions of power in, actually in Bangladesh, if you think about it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Uh, so where the worst instance of ac not acknowledging a genocide, hmm. you have already covered that in this channel in great depth, thanks to hmm. Ross Malik's paper. Yeah. The Mojapi massacre, which right. which people don't even know about in Bengal, let yeah. alone India. Hmm. This is the worst genocide of, uh, if I can even, so according to the left, these people are Munlivasis, they are Shidul caste, right? So in a way, yeah. so if you think about it, this is one of the most worst ethnic genocides in recent times, in the last 50, 60 years, but yeah. nobody talks about it in Bengal. Yeah, it was I genocide of asked, indigenous people then. Yeah, in a way, in a way, because these people are seen as Munlivasis. Yeah. Brahmins and others are seen as outsiders, right? Yeah. <laughs> so even if I take that that yeah. stupid uh, ideology into consideration, right. hmm. you see the Bhumiputras getting killed, right. shot at by the police, raped, murdered. Yeah. Uh, their bodies being dragged by crocodiles and, and you know, eaten by tigers. Yeah. Even then you see no, uh, you know, not one reaction, not one... Michil, not one people here commemorate, uh, I don't know, Stalin's birthday. Uh, 
right yeah, they, they can't commemorate one day of modit japi yeah. they don't because it will bring up some very uncomfortable questions that when you were protesting about the war in vietnam yeah your government was literally killing a few hundred dalits one at a time hmm. and they were starving them to death before killing them yeah. what this is somewhat i i shouldn't want to use this metaphor but it was like a nazi concentration camp there hmm. what they did it was hmm. not very different i would say Hmm. So ethnic cleansing ho raha tha and people were uh, what they were saying tomar nam bawar nam Vietnam they were saying that Chinese chairman, our the chairman. So I have a theory about this, of course. Hmm. Um, post the 1940s, there was a neo-colonial establishment in Bengal, which was manned primarily by upper castes. Yeah, by the, neo-colonial. The, the Brahmo Congress Alliance. Yes, if you think about it, and which uh, was exemplified mostly by the co- communists, right? Who, okay. who ruled, uh, who democratically got elected for thirty-four years, yeah. democratically in courts. Hmm. So um, the thing is that these people were fighting always; they were working for foreign interests, hmm. whether they were clever enough to know it or not. But like any colonizing force, uh, the communists, the new colonialists uh, in the country and outside. they funded the elites they kept funding the upper castes here hmm. and they yes. if you look at i'll just my viewers i'll uh, your viewers i'll tell you to do tell them to do one thing think of a schedule cast actor singer a uh, music director um, writer author um uh, this thing um, any any form of intellectual uh, intellectual activity tell me the name of one prominent uh, celebrated uh, schedule caste or schedule tribe in these areas i can show you in up there is a mayawati who was the chief minister mm. there are numerous uh, cabinet and uh, you know other ministers in the present government and previous even to give them some credit even congress hmm. right yeah. um, maharashtra other places you see schedule caste lower caste obcs yeah. they rise to positions of power name one obc or schedule cast prime uh, chief minister or hmm. minister in the west bengal government in the last 40 50 years yeah not one so this these people the left always gaslights uh, people by saying manuvadi and all that hmm. uh, although the left is it's very interesting when bengalis bengalis are very uncritically accepting of uh, global and uh, national you know ideologies if you think about it yeah yeah they will say monubadi okay yeah. many people monubadi uh, thing who is saying it some chatterjee or bhattacharjee on facebook right yeah. they are using a jewish platform which is funded by the us a capitalistic endeavor which <laughs> is run by un- unpaid interns <laughs> and then they are they are uh, talking about monubad while their own surnames are these three let three syllable you know chatterjee banerjee bhattacharjee yeah. and so- all so they are the white liberals of india because they need to overcompensate and and show that no no you see i'm nothing like my ancestors i love you extra hard come come hug me tightly they so that will, you can suffocate they will even doubt so the worst part about bongs is unlike the white liberals who say that okay my ancestors may have been slave owners and uh, may have profited of uh, colonial yeah. capitalism <laughs> these people will deny that there was casteism in bengal and they they were dominant caste they will not yeah. say that my ancestors uh enjoyed privileges under the uh, you know from the medieval period they will even deny that they will say caste uh, is nothing in bengal yeah. right how come we've never had a dalit chief minister how come we've never had not just chief minister i can't even name one prominent academic so there are not even those cases where a rickshaw wala son goes to power I, there are very hmm. few cases hmm. very few okay yeah. so it's it's pertinent that we ask these questions now yeah and uh, how much of that is uh, uh, just just because they don't want the non elite in power or they are friends with the elite upper castes in power and how much of that was uh, that, that that keeping of upper castes in in political uh, positions of power how much of that was done by specifically the communists in this case so that they could go ahead with their anti india anti hindu agenda while the gun was f- being fired from the shoulders of a brahmin only a brahmin can say the most anti hindu things and get away with it i guess that was their pro- was it possibly their understanding i don't think it was that clear per se one thing i will tell you is the communist party if you look at its structure 
it is the most undemocratic uh, electoral you know kind of a formation if i can call it that hmm. uh, in the in the history of this country and even in the world if you think about it so the politburo for example the communist party of india marxist their politburo hmm. completely hmm. male practically male no women hmm. almost brahmin if there is a yeah. politburo hmm. session of the communist party it will look like brahmin mahasabha okay yeah. so it is not perhaps uh, i guess what happened is because the brahmins and certain upper castes were in academia mm. and and other mm. kinds of literate um, professions like uh, they were bureaucrats uh, sons of bureaucrats and all that mm. these people were the natural inheritors of the yeah. new colonial agenda yeah it may not have been so well thought out I, i'll give mm. them some like 2% credit maybe mm. they didn't think that oh let's collectively exclude lower castes Yeah, but the structure is such that they did not allow lower caste to rise. Mm-hmm. That right. may have been deliberate. Yeah, the schooling, the everything, that that whole you know agenda thing. Yeah, why not? Why why won't they give away their powers to uh, to, to to people who are not their friends directly or people who are in the lower classes or castes? No, so um, I'll tell you, this is very like so. We have to go back to the ideology of communism a bit. Yeah. If you read, uh, there's an article by Lenin in Pravda. I'm I'm assuming in 1970, 17, 17. Okay. Um, it's it's I forget the name. Uh, now Lenin, uh, Lenin was the editor of Pravda, so obviously his articles mm-hmm. would be printed there. So Lenin openly says that liberal democracy is a threat to uh, everything that we hold dear, workers' mm-hmm. rights and everything. Mm-hmm. now his proposition is that uh, 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 the dictatorship of the proletariat that is precious that is the best thing that can happen right mm. so in a way if you look at the structure of the communist party which has i believe has had still holds power in india still in some ways uh, you will see that it is highly undemocratic lenin himself mm. was the son of a bureaucrat in okay zarist russia he was no he was not some very poor person who came mm. up right yeah uh, stalin would be an exception but stalin was i guess even worse than lenin in some ways yeah. so the dilemma here lies in the fact that why do they not share power because yeah. i believe that the communist party was a resurgence of feudalism in um, in certain parts of europe mm. if liberal democracy meant that uh, a mayawati could become the pri- chief minister uh, yeah. pramodi could become the prime minister yeah then uh, let's go back to feudalism but if you call it feudalism hmm. then people hmm. uh, get angry because that means you're a serf under yeah. the dominant caste right or yeah. the landlords yeah uh, so you're whipped you can't say that you have to say that oh i'm 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 your friend right yeah. um and then you kick, kick them in the backside yeah. but that the point is that this facade in yeah. my opinion yeah. was a reestablishment of feudalism in yeah. in every way possible globally as well as here and you will notice that that is why in america as well the beneficiaries of the leftist ideology have always been those who are already in power yeah if i mean woke capitalism i'm not yeah. talking about the you know maybe 17th 18th century 19th century capitalists hmm. uh they were relatively more liberal compared to their present counterparts the same hmm. aspect goes for uh zarist uh, post zarist russia like communist russia yeah. the people who were in power were former bureaucrats the sons of bureaucrats and all that yeah uh and if you see even after that when the communist party fell in the ussr when it declined hmm. and then the people who benefited were all party workers who if you trace their links they were all belonging to bureaucrat sons okay so here as well look at the structure of the communist party ex mostly brahmins kaisto hmm. buddhi yeah. the three landed castes who served as bureaucrats under the mughals and british yeah these yes. these they learned persian when yes. the mughals were in power yes. they learned english when the british were in power yes and then what they did was they quickly switched to uh, okay what's the global trend now oh that's mm. communism okay yeah. where the biggest communists you can find yeah. so it was a reestablishment of certain feudalism feudalistic uh, you know relations yes. now, in society 
that would obviously take place everywhere in a in any post colonial society which is that the the collaborator class uh, someone or the other will collaborate and their descendants will be obviously the the biggest beneficiaries of that collaboration uh, but then uh, is it, is there something distinct about bengal in bengal uh, would it be uh, at all fair to say that no let's not just call them uh, simply the the brahmins who were in power or have been in power since independence or in the communist party it was just the uh, upper class is it as simple as that or or it there needs to be other nuance and uh, is it is it really distinct in bengal as in only the brahmins in every celebrity cricketer politician face that you can mostly find most of them are brahmins in bengal is that so in the rest of the country and if not why not no and how so not first firstly uh, there is there are two peculiar cases in india so uh my uh, uh you know my my kind of name say christoph jaffalor he edited a volume called rise of the plebeians hmm. uh okay so there he actually demonstrated how the obcs and dalits have come to power in india since the 90s they hmm. they used so perhaps it was the new liberal economy perhaps it was the free market enterprise perhaps it was people just going to canada and driving trucks and earning money whatever hmm. it was they sent back money and uh, they earned money the lower mm. classes and they started asserting themselves in public life and uh, as a result right now in india you have very few states with brahmins and upper the ritual upper caste if i can say right that. right you primarily have dalits obcs um uh you know other kinds of non not so powerful castes ruling i mean right. in the sense that not so ritually powerful yeah the, the traditional the varnas yeah you have even jatavs and other you know uh, there itself there's a dominant caste equation that i shall come to later hmm. but in bengal and kerala these are two states where the brahmins whole hmm. power still despite hmm. being around roughly 5% of the population hmm. so this is counter uh, you know this is this runs counter to the trend of the national uh, what we see at the national level yeah be it uh, gujarat rajasthan other places even rajasthan you would see a dominance of rajputs but yeah. not as much as you would see uh, brahmins castes buddhists dominating in bengal mm. every aspect like you mentioned every cultural yeah. aspect yeah movie movie se leke politics everything absolutely if practically brahmins castes and buddhists you will never find this in let's say uh, up yeah which is apparently the heartland of caste right <laughs> you 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 see you see right now a rajput if i if i can refer to him as that although he has abandoned his caste and family yeah. but still uh, you see a rajput chief minister yeah in a state that is ruled that has been dominated by jatavs and yadavs yeah right you see in haryana khattar is not um, a, a, a jat even yeah. among jats actually jats themselves were in a way actually a peasant caste who mm. rose eventually to power mm. so if you look at it everywhere people mm. of different castes have come up they have managed to use either capitalism or their you know local strength to come up in politics yeah. bengal and kerala present a unique weird uh, stat you know it's it's an anomaly of sorts that mm. bengal west bengal has the second highest population of dalits shirul castes okay but not at all any kind of representation of dalits in politics and uh, you know cinema. yeah how did that oh. happen uh, because of the the <laughs> by mistake the communists and or even the congress the way they structured their inner uh, political machinery or or the uh, oh. brahmins of bengal were that clever to to remain in, in power forever and after well the story kind of becomes interesting after partition what hmm. happens is during partition uh, the first people to run from bangladesh were the relative upper castes so the okay. brahman bodhis of uh, kaistos of uh, bangladesh present yes. day bangladesh back yes. then yes there are many many descendants of uh, partition who do say that no we were not actually that poor we did have a great business or a great house yeah. and even when they came here they actually found good houses somehow that was because they came in the 30s and late 30s and 40s okay, okay. so when you come in the late 30s and 40s before people are getting yeah. murdered then you are yeah. getting a relatively decent kind of you're you're selling your house in bangladesh for a good price and all yeah now yeah. after the 40s when things go horrible hmm. then people start also started escaping but what they had to do is they had to abandon their property and wealth and uh, 
you know even their gold i guess you know you can't yeah. carry yeah, uh, yeah. copious amounts of gold on on a train and come right or yeah. or somehow walk kilometer after kilometer hmm. and uh, these people the people who came after the 40s especially hmm. the people who came in the 70s after the uh, war uh, hmm. of liberation so then what happened is the, a lot of these were actually lower castes hmm. majority now already they don't have uh, a ton of wealth to begin with yeah. but they had land they had like maybe small holdings of land and some of them were you know trying to you know do better for themselves through okay. agriculture and all that and maybe some of them were trying to get educated but hmm. their numbers would be relatively low okay not because brahmins did not tell give them the vedas hmm. but because they were you know their uh, the possibility of them acquiring it acquiring wealth and power in one generation is very difficult in yeah. in pvs and their profession uh, all mane uh, how many people really change the profession uh, of their of their parents or uh, get away go do a absolutely different thing even today not yeah. many only 1 and, to and, 2% and, people and do that this is where this is where we make a huge mistake like we see the west as a place where uh, overnight people came to uh, you know poor people yeah. become rich right that's yeah. not true in the yeah. west also uh, 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 uh and elon musk is coming from a business family it's not as yeah. as if he's some rickshawala son in south yeah south he's africa. the upper middle class of south africa and yes. the beneficiaries of of colonialism yes so it's not like the west suddenly uh, the west is more fluid than india hmm. but what happened is they these people were unlucky hmm. they before they could make anything good about their lives they had hmm. to run away because of their religious identity from hmm. bangladesh uh, erstwhile pa- east pakistan yeah and they settled here but when they settled here the governments did not help them at all they gave them very little land mm. uh they were basically living in make you know make do basties and you know in horrible living conditions whereas yeah. the upper caste still had some places like jadavpur and certain colonies like vijayagar and all mm. the rest of these people had to live on basically marshland and 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 kind of like uh very dilapidated shanties and and like huts basically they were living in huts right yes and life expectancy sucks when you're living in a hut uh, yeah. in in horrible conditions uh, yeah think about the kashmiri pandits in jammu yeah so but at least some they were educated they were the educated lot these people yeah. did not even have education so yeah. when you start over your life from zero negative i would say hmm. then there is very little possibility of the lower castes actually coming back up now what the upper caste did here was okay we're we're back we're 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 at a loss now some of us so what do we do we have to reestablish ourselves so okay let's become uh, officers again let's become uh, you know academics uh, leaders of communist movements and all we have the vote so yeah. what happens is because the influx of such a high number of refugees hmm. uh, they had a vote bank overnight yeah. the left and this leftist vote bank they um, they voted for these guys because they they promised them uh, you know uh, you know cheaper rent they promised them more uh, permanent solutions for their problems right yeah uh, so the communists became powerful but if you look at the communist party again you will see no lower caste very few lower caste leaders in their yeah. uh, uh, you know the, the the roster of the party yeah So what happens is these guys then come to power in 1977. Yeah. Morid Jhappi incident happens in 1979. Yeah. By the early 1980s they ban English education in West Bengal. Yeah. That right. will tell you the story of why from the 80s so firstly we have the lower caste they suffer a lot under uh, also because of the Nehruvian regime the Bengal economy stagnated since the 60s. Yeah. Right? uh the the uh, the communists here who have come they are their first target is the people who gave them jobs actually yeah. the businessmen uh, yeah. so you have low low possibility of getting jobs in the factories in the private sector hmm. your government jobs are essentially flooded with mostly upper castes and the the established people so you don't have a lot of leeway there hmm. the this pre mandal so the obc reservation is not yet there hmm. and when in bengal the schedule castes who are coming up are primarily so this is the fallacy that thomas sowell i think talks about that hmm. even if somebody comes up through reservation it's highly unlikely they will be the poorest of the lot yeah they will be the most uh, down trodden yeah. they will be usually schedule castes and schedule tribes who have acquired some wealth and yeah. land and power right yeah 
so you don't really have a ton of social mobility from the 1950s in west bengal yeah and the communist party people they ensured this further by banning the one thing that they, that could have given some people some power hmm. is the english medium education yeah the, the one thing raja ramon roy actually wanted <laughs> <laughs> so well the priest on his grave if if i can yeah. say it that yeah. but in a way i am not sad that they they destroyed his legacy i am sad that they did it partially if yeah. you had to ban english to promote yeah. your regional ambitions hmm. then you should have done it across the aisle you should have done it in every private english medium school and everything you should have said there are no english medium schools hmm. there's a bangla medium everywhere private public everything right yeah you didn't have the guts to do that because jyoti basu's uh, uh, you know son and uh, grandson and all were studying in lamartinier and st xavier's you didn't have the guts to do that yeah what you did was you told the farmer's son that okay if you study bangla and uh, you study i don't know abcd in class 5 and 6 hmm. you might get a better life but we've yeah. already given you some land uh, after operation barga which was a fake one again yeah so we've given you some tiny portion of land you can be a farmer for the rest of your like 20 generations right while yeah. our kids even if the even if we screw up the businesses here our hmm. kids who have learned english Hmm. can go to bangalore and bombay and hyderabad and do jobs they can yeah. go to the us and do jobs for the capitalists that we abuse in calcutta right yeah but you lot you farmers and you i mean the uh, well i don't want to use the n word but hmm. basically their attitude towards them was like that yeah and right. uh, there's a there's an interesting criticism coming here uh, from some of my viewers who are thinking that this is sort of a, a brahmin bashing session <laughs> going on and so she is <laughs> pointing out that uh, khudiram bos swami vivekananda arobindo uh, bhaga jyoti so even the people who in fact wanted the col- uh, colonial powers to go away so even they were from the upper caste and not they were these castes were not just collaborators but it it doesn't make a difference because their children were also still the beneficiaries of their upper caste collaboration in the way that by collaboration we don't mean just getting a job in the british government by collaboration we mean of course trying to get some benefit out of it by learning english that is the main key uh, uh, designated key thing here which which is changing the trajectory of people's lives isn't it there uh, lies a problem in such an assertion so the mm. problem is that if we look at um, so so uh, the some of the communist leaders right like shom biggest name comes to mind is somnath chatterjee mm. um a brahmin communist mm. very typical uh, he uh, his father was a member of the hindu mahasabha okay fought against the british right yeah so i'm not saying that the upper caste never fought against the british the upper mm. caste were the ones who led exactly. the movements against Absolutely. the british and the colonial powers yeah but what they fought for maybe somebody like netaji subhas bose or swami vivekananda who did want to uplift the lower caste and yeah. poor their vision was uh, high, you know convoluted after their their vision was destroyed after the 50s hmm. once we did get independence yeah. we we you know we just made them into pictures and hung them somewhere we didn't true, true. we didn't actually walk on the path that they showed us so absolutely i am not blaming upper caste in general upper yeah. caste did a lot of things to to think yeah. that uh the Beng- the brahmins for example the brahmins allowed a lot of they didn't allow they they enabled a lot of lower caste to come to power your own you have seen the sadgops and tili case right yeah. like where lower caste they wanted to rise Yeah, and the Brahmins told that told them that yes, if you want to rise, just you know do whatever I tell you, and I'll give you a nice genealogy, I'll give you a nice uh, new identity, and you can do. Yes. So the Brahmins did facilitate upward yes. mobility. Otherwise, see what if you are saying that the Brahmins did not allow anyone to rise, hmm. then you are calling ninety five percent people in India idiots. Yeah, who did not exactly. Who did, who, who submitted uncritically yeah. to the offer of the brahmins <laughs> and and to so a that, people who didn't even own the uh, arms or not the wealth yes so <laughs> they didn't even threaten you with guns and uh, <laughs> knives and you yeah. told them that okay you know whatever you say great you wrote a few books in sanskrit so i love you <laughs> so nobody said that right yeah people yeah. said that okay you it's a it's a give and take relationship i yeah, i absolutely. agree that you are great if you agree that i i am good too 
right yeah. it wasn't it was a give and take relation people were clever people yeah. in india have always been very clever and they made the best out of the worst yeah but in bengal this was and this is where i blame the communist ideology not the brahmins and not the hindutva if anything mm. if the people here are still somewhat religious and they still uh, are somewhat spiritual because of the legacy of people like swami vivekananda and chaitanya mahaprabhu mm. we cannot yeah. it didn't go they didn't become russia where people uh, i guess they are becoming something like that right now thanks yeah. to the present regime yeah. but uh, they didn't become like that immediately because um, the 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 values of sanatan yeah. they were there they they were you know they were covered by a ton of leaves and dust and everything yeah. but they were still there somewhere inside yes yes so that's what will save bengal as well that's mm. what will save bengal yeah. eventually given so, the right law and order situation yeah and we'll come to that a little later uh, yeah now exact uh, statement uh, west bengal is the most caste society in india why most and still uh, with some examples i guess uh, but some examples we have already discussed that every every avenue seems to be done by a ganguly chatterjee mukherjee but uh, in other ways where is the suffering still going on uh, we just know that the upper castes uh, have the main uh, voice etc how are they today negatively affecting since they are not uh, caste themselves according to them them themselves only because they will they would not spit on a dalit etc but then what's the problem if if they are still in positions of power so i would say that there is not a lack of untouchability here here the untouchability is slightly different hmm. it is it is uh, firstly if you notice uh, urban upper castes uh, bengalis yeah. who are who usually have a legacy of communism in their family hmm. uh, these people they talk they use terms like ure mero khotta yeah. right ure for uria mero for marwari khotta means bihari or uh, you know upi right okay yeah so these are highly pejored it's like calling black people the n word in yeah. my opinion it is mm. very pejorative yes they look at them as animals they mm. talk of chhat puja like it's some kind of a uh, god knows it's it's some something out of a uh, badshah video or something yeah. yeah again bengalis have this uh, very um, uh, you know niche kind of rabindrik lifestyle yeah which according to them is pristine and pure and nice and uh, superior to mm. that of uh, people who listen to a bhojpuri song or watch a hindi movie right yeah. hindi movies were uh, pretty much uh, banned in some households till the 90s and 2000 yes. yes so if you think about it this regionalism is not a bengali identity this is a very upper caste mm. urban identity that they are talking about they will talk about people tribals of purulia in the same way hmm. how they talk about the tribals of purulia is oh these people are so poor they're they're stupid you know we have to help them hmm. who who has asked you to be a savior hmm. have the tribals of purulia told you that i want you i want a upper caste the urban bengali to save me hmm. they have never said that they said they said that brother we voted for you build us roads and railways and give us basic government education and healthcare hmm. we can do business and do the rest they never yeah. said that we want your pity yeah of 200 bucks which we bengali still bargain with by the way yeah. when they go for tribal dances yes. so my point is that this this kind of casteism is very hidden hmm. but not so hidden if you are a bengali you will understand how bengalis talk about people from other states Yes. they tell other people they they dismiss other state state ka people like upites and bihari or oh, those people are highly casteist and they hate yeah, everyone yeah. yeah i was like bro they elected the india's first dalit female chief minister how can you call it? how many how can we bengali say that ever mm. you yeah. your dismissal of the upites and biharis as the other mm. your dismissal of motuas and 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 uh and other schedule castes in bengal as the other by saying that their choice of music their choice of clothes their choice of uh, words these are low these are these are uh, you know unforgiving these are these are horrible hmm. your that itself betrays a very casteist mentality which biharis are we talking we're not talking about the shuddh sanskrit biharis uh, bihari brahmin 
pandits right yeah, yeah. we're primarily talking about bihari laborers and 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 uh, you know upi laborers uriya plumbers and all these people people who have right. done menial labor for centuries now yes so these people when you're dismissing them as khatta yeah. right uh, they are you are kind of being a casteist towards them because simply yes. because they listen to bhojpuri music hmm. or they they hmm. have you know thekua uh, hmm. once a year yeah. that's why you see them as inferior and yeah. just because you can afford to go to park street and you know have a nice pork rib you you think you're superior because you're a sasta version of the british colonial lords who whom you yeah. served so faithfully for the last two, two centuries yes so it doesn't make you less ca- you are more racist and casteist than anyone hmm. uh, now their India. their argument would be that we hate them because they don't they don't do good music or they are so misogynist in their music and so we have a right we have a moral justification for for hating them and looking down upon them because they have so many kids they are they are bad uh, towards their women etc but it it mainly repeatedly comes down to misogyny only so i guess we can be casteist towards them or we can be classist towards them because they are misogynist fucks <laughs> oh, what do we say about that bengali is uh, bengali upper caste men uh, so there was this uh, article by tanika sarkar who is a great leftist historian uh she she wrote uh, about the uh, age of consent bill if i am not mistaken okay. and the age of consent bill was basically about uh, when there were child marriages in west bengal in hmm. bengal undivided bengal hmm. during the british era and the british said okay you can't uh, marry 8 year old and 7 year old kids yeah uh, primarily brahmin and buddhi and kaistos did that hmm. now why was this law enacted because a man had i think raped his wife eight year old wife and she okay. died from bleeding hmm. and uh, i would call that rape because it certainly yeah, obviously was obviously without consent not seen consensual in any yeah. way i don't want to invoke other examples from yeah. other places but anyway <laughs> so big lest nirajan be killed in the process so i will stop at yes. stop there about this now uh, uh, the thing is that if if uh, these these bengali upper caste men not so long ago maybe a century ago uh, they crowded in calcutta and they demanded the british government to stop meddling in their personal affairs hmm. so who was misogynist and who wasn't uh, becomes very clear from the rates of sati hmm. among upper caste by the way sati is not a hindu practice if you look at um, yeah it's mostly mostly happened in rajasthan not even in rajasthan it was there here as well yeah but just primarily now. done by upper caste it yeah. was done as a as a measure not of a uh, religion it was done as a measure to protect property according to romila thapar right so uh, in many ways uh, was it just a property. personal johar johar was done in gangs this was sort of a personal johar that uh, yeah this, no this was uh, there were a lot of factors here so again the banning of sati itself uh, yeah. in bengal uh, you know created a ton of arguments hmm. now i would give uh, i would tell your readers to read about the sati uh, argument by two people um uh, latamani okay. and uh, there is another one called andrea major okay these people have shown that primarily sati is not a hindu practice per se that okay. the british okay. thought i see it was a primarily upper caste practice in certain parts of the country not again everywhere certain okay. parts of the country yeah, yeah. and uh, the upper caste men in bengal who now judge biharis for be singing lollipop lagelu hmm. these people who are murdering women because you know they they the husbands had died right mm. so yeah. we ourselves have a very nice and horrible history of uh, misogyny in the mm. state not to mention west bengal right now leads in child marriages in the country not rajasthan not uh, up bihar uh, which are supposed to be horrible uh, yeah. but west bengal which has uh, the most uh, sophisticated and educated people but you uh, see uh, statistics is known only by people who do follow statistics but in general our music is so beautiful we don't we don't talk about women's uh, breasts and and uh, bellies etc but only only of course uh, intellectual very intellectual struggling poets do talk about periods and and breasts etc to tomar stone and nitambo <laughs> and those those things don't end so uh, are they still not aware that they are in fact misogynist or their misogyny is different or they don't even care that they are misogynist because they think the bihari misogynist or upi misogynist is is extra misogynist 
and and should misogyny be the only uh, weapon to beat someone with should should that be the only criteria for someone to be declared good or or a bad uh, society or or uh, ethnicity so i'll draw your attention to a incident that happened a few years ago so there was a me too incident uh, happening across campuses uh, yeah. i think somebody exposed it uh, a bengali i would think um or punjabi i, I don't know that na ki naam chilo um so somebody made a public post about a bunch of professors mm-hmm. who were uh, harassing their sexually harassing their young female students okay and if you look at the list it is mm-hmm. primarily bengali and upper caste hmm yeah in different universities of india yeah yeah so perhaps we do not sing lollipop lagelu yeah but we we uh, many of our uh, esteemed peers they practice uh, such misogyny in their daily lives hmm. so bengalis have this saying ghomta to like hamta so that is perhaps the best example of that is the best proverb to describe uh, bengali men uh, in positions of power hmm apart from the fact that recently a actress who is contesting the election from the ruling party in bengal has said that um uh, and many others uh, from that party have denied the sandesh khali accusation saying that oh you know i mean many of them may have been lying how do we yeah. know yeah. what they're saying right and these yeah. are the same people who will believe who will say um you know the women's word is sacred yeah, uh, yeah. believe the victim, victims so there is no i i don't even want to say what the chief minister has said on several locations because i don't want you to get killed yeah but uh, you know there if you just dig up some archives on what she has said and how there is a lack of condemnation of what she has said including hmm. what obijit binayak has said about um, uh, the delhi delhi rape case if i am not mistaken obijit binayak is the great nobel prize winning uh, economist uh, yes. who won the nobel prize a few years ago yeah for who for his uh, research funded by saudi arabia yeah on poverty in india okay so this uh, great uh, economist uh, his views on rape and rape culture are very mm. interesting if you care to dig it up i see um uh, he kind of if i am not mistaken he kind of said that you know people are jobless so they could uh, this is a sanitized version of what mulayam ji said mulayam ji said bacche hai ho jate hai <laughs> So anyway, so the best of the Bengalis, they are, they do not paint a very uh, pro-feminist picture. In fact, I can tell you another stat that not a lot of people are aware of. Bengal is ahead in terms of crimes of crimes against women. Okay. Bengal is ahead of most states in crimes against women. But of course, the argument against that is that in in Bihar and UP, you can't even go to register your cases. That that's why Bengal is so far ahead. And <laughs> and Kolkata is the safest city out of the blue uh, every time, every, every year from some magazine or the other. No, no. Of course, this is uh, this is. I, I wouldn't. I don't want to say much because this channel might get demonetized or attacked. I, no, I just no. I'm say not responsible for your comments. Try, you... try filing a try filing a case in a local thana in West Bengal and uh, see how. Like play uh, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's what happens in West Bengal. A, 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 a state where every election, even even a teachers union election. sees the ballot rigged the ballot box is rigged right. in a teachers union election yeah has no uh, you know moral high ground to mm. judge others from mm. okay where every election at least 50 to 100 people are murdered brutally mm. Mm. burnt alive killed uh, raped god knows what yeah. we have no we we bengalis have no higher moral ground to judge others from at all in any part of india or the world even if we make the most of... amount of national award winning movies <laughs> i i i have my um... okay so about movies this is very interesting so uh, if you look at the 70s the kind of movies that bengalis were producing yeah um <laughs> if you look at topon sinha shotojit ray uh, i wouldn't go for ritik ghotak much he only made uh, poverty porn in my opinion But he also uh, was very underfunded he did not have the yeah, contact yeah, yeah. number of nehru in his phone list yeah but even if you look at the kind of movies that were that people were watching in bengal right yeah. there was no uh, art house movie versus uh, mass movie there right. was not that concept much in bengal back then hmm. uh, tokon sinas go- uh, movies were very well made technically yeah. and and the script writing and everything was br- brilliant hmm. they would win oscars if the oscars weren't rigged 
so the the thing is these kind of movies were prevalent in the 70s yeah um and if you look at the 90s the kind of movies that were being made right you see a clear dichotomy after communist party came to power absolutely okay. what happens is once you destroy the public education system people start watching baba kano chakur hmm yeah and the people who do go to english medium schools or the best schools in calcutta they watch uh, movies like that are that i i don't think i could watch on a you know good day yeah. like movies based on some kind of uh, nijian or marxist yeah. ideology that like five people in the world would understand right yeah. that and it's that black and white and has 50 nude scenes only yeah yeah, yeah 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 <laughs> or nude to tokhon cholto na communist party so oh, yeah. they would have implied nudity and oh, so you're talking have, about uh, indian movies watched by the english speaking bengali elite Yes, yes. Achha, Indian yeah. mane Bengali, the yeah, Bengali yeah. Tolly Tolly Ganj movies. Yeah, yeah. They became bifurcated into two parts. Yeah. So one movie was watched by like five people in Calcutta. Yeah. The art house movies, clear yeah. art house movies by Gautam Ghosh, uh, Ritu Parno Ghosh, and all these people. Yeah. Again, upper caste and primarily catering to upper caste sensibilities, Rabindrik yeah. sensibilities, and all that. and there are clearly there are disco numbers in happening in the middle of the field yeah. by shopun saha type movies where yeah. uh, the where typically unemployment also became very stark so yeah. there in this movies the hero would always be unemployed yes okay and therefore uh, fighting the, against the factory owner etc yes so so you see that uh, after the communist party came there was a collective decline in IQ or if yeah. you, if you can if I can not call it IQ I would say why not IQ if if, chi- if child nutrition goes down because of poverty and joblessness obviously IQ will also go down yeah 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 that is expected and and the same people whose grandparents were watching uh, you know more complex movies by Raj Kapoor Sotoitra and all these yeah their children are unable to uh, you know uh, fathom the uh, you know a, a yes. good movie yes or watch and a good I think movie. uh to some extent it could be argued that uh, that bridge was srijit mukherjee basically with autograph and bishrabon yeah. because he suddenly for the first time in in 30 years started making movies which were watched both by the official and the bengal english medium speaking guys also but ye, only last night i saw finally dashama avatar which is the third part in the series of uh, bishrabon it's yeah. it's pretty pretty uh bad actually in in comparison to even bishra sravan and autograph i guess <laughs> it's because of the 1.5 crore budget because i think everything he had to execute within one or two days he could not spend time in every anything except the songs i think the songs were only uh done done well so that even if you don't come to watch the movie so that you you still think of me as a good director or the production house as good i think the songs were given extra attention interestingly but the movie yeah. is just it seems like a kid wrote it in class 11 that so that decline is still going on and still so, done by brahmins so so i'd like to correct you about srijit about one thing srijit hmm. and uh, the rise of bangla band and all hmm. this was post brand buddho yeah yeah this was post neo liberalism kind of entering bengal through the back door uh, yeah. with buddho babu establishing the it sector and all that hmm. there was a sudden influx of uh, foreign movies uh, books uh, hmm. culture and mu- music all that post the 2000s what happened Absolutely. in india in the 90s yeah. more or less that is happening here in 2000s but yeah. but i would still say that srijit's movies being watched in the mofoshol was yeah. more because of its shock factor in a way hmm. that in baishe sravan there was a ton of abusive uh, dialogue yeah. for right? the first time yes for the first time in bengali hmm. uh, movies but right, that right. was a novelty that was a novelty yeah so a lot of people watched it for that because they right. felt rebellious uh, while watching that movie yes but if you look at it the primary audience remained the it professionals of calcutta hmm. who, who formed a legit like large class of uh, you know upper caste but you know j- large audience for these kind of movies and songs and uh, that kind of thing yeah post the buddho babu uh, era or during yeah. buddho babu era and then right after he went mm-hmm. that we went yeah. but then after industries have started moving away mm. faster than you know you can say timbuktu <laughs> uh then they they have that has also declined mm. so a bengali movie would earn decent amounts even till 2012 or something 
a well hmm. a, a relatively well made bengali movie hmm. but if yeah. you look at the same kind of movie in 2024 yeah then that movie no longer will do well yeah today so, today you can't even get a budget out of svf and so probably people, exactly that's because the people who can watch these movies who would yeah. enjoy a, a good movie yeah. firstly they have access to ott content so yeah. they don't need Uh, yeah. entertainment in the movie halls that much yeah and even when they are outside they're in bangalore and all yeah they would uh they would not watch a bengali movie because of its decline in quality yeah there is a humongous decline in quality by in, right. in absolutely a, a post post 2012 or 13 hmm. huge decline huge yeah now what how how what is this mystery that the upper castes who remained in power and were making good literature and good poetry good good even uh, pa- research papers coming up with inventions or start running businesses or making good movies when the 90s comes and bad movies bad research takes place even then it's the upper caste doing it so horonath chakraborty prashanthit chatterjee it's still the brahmins doing the bad stuff and before them the no. brahmins were creating the good stuff Yeah, so but whatever at, happens, Pushen quality may go up or, go. or go down. It will look be at, done by at, Brahmins. No, no, no. It's not. It's not. I would say it's not about Brahmin or uh, you know other lower caste here. Hmm. It's more like um, Toshenjit was uh, of a recognizable face since the eighties. Yeah, right. And he was a child uh, actor as well. His father was also a relatively yeah. His actor. father is a famous actor, Vishwajit. Yeah. yeah, all over India actually. Vishwajit was famous yeah. in other parts of the yes, country as yes. well. So you would have Ranjit Mallik, who is a recognizable face in the eighties, and from a these Bengal royal family, Zamindar family. Yes. So these two people, they kept the industry going to their credit. Yeah. yeah. Now the thing is about Ranjit Mallik and Pushenjit. I I hear that they have some uh, Guinness record of starring in the highest number of films together. Like they are hmm. like no other people have hmm. been co-stars in uh, the same. Uh, there are so many movies. Hmm. Okay. So they, I think they have done like 500 movies together. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm just it's a random number. Definitely above a hundred. Hmm. Okay. So that's saying something. Like you have like two or three people doing similar types of movies, a few yeah. hundred movies yeah. of the same type, a uh, similar theme, and uh, these are watched primarily in single screens in rural theaters. Yes. Many of which were on the verge of closing down. Yeah. Right. So. Bengal's economy, simply put, if you look at it, um, for example, if you watch a movie with which has just released in Calcutta, hmm. uh, the ticket prices are the lowest in the country. <laughs> yes, you will not get such low ticket prices anywhere. That's the one part I appreciate about staying in Calcutta. <laughs> But other than that, it's horrible. That means that um, even if you do make a very good movie <laughs> with a good production, yeah. chances of you getting back your money. Yeah. Um, Within two weeks, like yeah. like has happened for Kashmir Files or yeah. uh, Article Three Seventy and all, yeah. uh, that chances are very slim. Hmm. You will probably not make back make any money back because hmm. people don't have buying power. Yeah, people buy. People don't. People don't. People. You will uh, just go out of your house early around ten a.m. Hmm. one day, and there are these stalls where they sell egg and rice for five rupees. Yeah, and see the. Number of people who go there. Hmm. I don't want to judge them. I'm not a typical bong who says these people are lower class and all. Hmm. But just look at the purchase. People will do anything for that five rupees. Uh, you know, dim bhat. Yeah. So that is the level of purchasing power we have at this point in Bengal. It is yeah. one of the worst economies of the country. <laughs> yes. We were a sovereign nation. We like we need World Bank assistance every two months. Okay? Yeah. So. We're lucky we are a part of India, which has a thriving economy at this point. Yeah. Because otherwise, post-COVID, we would have just shut down yeah. as a country. Yeah. Oh, we, I've, oh, we have one interesting question from a viewer here. He's asking that uh, why didn't commies who know that uh, using arts is a great way to push their propaganda? Why didn't even they care about uh, funding uh, arts in a great way or movies in a great way? Why did they think that okay, let let movies go to hell? We don't even need propaganda in arts. So the commies here are, like I said, the most casteist party in India is the CPIM. Why? Okay. Let, let's just let, cl- clarify that once, once again for for revision, and then yes. we'll get so to why did the they CPIM, let uh, Bengali cinema go to hell? Yes, the CPIM um, 
sees people as animals and humans and their own party members are the top people as humans and the rest of the world as animals in of different kinds of animals okay so uh, this is the i mean i don't need to prove that they killed so many lower caste muslims yeah, yeah. and uh, dalits yeah tigers. we know that already. they 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 kept malnourished kept them malnourished all that stuff is already said what yeah. i will say about the entertainment industry is hmm. they were very content keeping this uh, horrible industry in place because they never wanted hmm. people to think hmm. now uh, i'll give you an example um, rambo 4 or rambo 3 yeah the one where he goes to afghanistan okay and yeah. and beats up every kaumi in sight okay yeah that released in so you would remember that globe theaters was the only place where you could watch a few foreign movies yeah. like hollywood movies. yeah globe and a few others i think new empire and globe yeah in cal chaplin so chaplin a few others yeah so these these halls they they actually th- trashed the globe the globe theater hmm. because they had released Ra- rambo hmm. where rambo is beating the crap out of russian communists okay hmm. so you will see that any kind of challenge to the hegemony hmm. uh, of their power was heavily suppressed this is yeah ye casteism nahi hai to kya hai yeah okay yeah. they they saw russia as their you know mother they so they thought this country was full of like they were the british lords they like dogs and indians not allowed yeah. so they they said okay but dogs and indians need to be entertained right so let's play baba kano chakur for them yeah so that this, they stay this brings baba to mind kano, a quote by andrew tate and which seems apl- applicable here that you have the freedom you don't have the freedom to be smart you have the freedom to be stupid and silly yes and the, the, there is a there is a well thought out reason why they kept these yeah. these industries going like right. the way they were going till the early 2000s because mm. they never actually cared about the rural people they wanted them to remain em- common theme of these movies would never be that you work hard and establish your own factory and stuff that would be a very marginal thing hmm. most themes were you stay at home your wife and their you know their uh, the wives are fighting in a house like kyuki sasbi ka bahut hi and all hmm. and uh, these are very shorot chandra type themes like these are hmm. very uh, but but they didn't even take that into account like shorot chandra chatterjee would talk about trade in uh, other parts of the world right they didn't even yeah. talk about that not one person is employed yeah and and shorchandra did uh, and did in depth studies of of the human existence yes for them for these people human existence was prashanjit and rituparna dancing in a field hmm. okay and singing the worst kind of songs which often were like direct translations of rithik roshan and uh, uh, you know uh, shahrukh khan's songs and even right. and basically bhojpuri misogyny yeah and if you look at the 19 uh there are there are movies with with complete sexual innuendos in yeah, the yeah. songs so, yeah. yeah that we pretend that bengali is our superior palette yeah is a joke because mm. there are actual songs which completely which almost abuse mm. in the and and just because and and and, and srijit made abusing cool because yeah. a guy who's abusing is parambrato yeah but in these movies it was a completely like you would think it was a bhojpuri movie except it was being uh, people were talking in bangla Yes. So, oh, so that kind of horrible movie experience, that kind of horrible intellectual experience. Yeah. Why do you think they did that? Because they were casteists of the highest order. They they themselves studied in presidency, Xavier's, Jadavpur. Mm. They watched Bergman and 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 they watched Steven Spielberg and yes. they they would critique uh, American propaganda after watching it. Yeah. Okay. They would watch Friends, right? Yeah. Yeah. But but they would tell the people of Bengal to watch Hello Friends. Yeah. which was a horrible version of friends in the 90s yes so, so and here actually in in become... in the movie datto versus datto uh, srijit mukherjee's character which is basically uh, based on gautam chattopadhyay of mohiner goraguli a bit uh, srijit asks his uh, budding filmmaker friend that panchu godard dekheni bole tumi godard banabe na that uh, if a, if a random common person hasn't seen godard you won't make a movie like godard what kind of an argument is that Uh, what do you have to say about that would you uh, would you agree that agree with it that your job as a director is to satisfy whatever the audience has seen for now your job is not to show them anything new yeah that that is precisely how the bengalis think <laughs> bengali upper caste they are still stuck i'll tell you if you ask somebody who was born in the 60s and 50s hmm. you ask them what their favorite movies are they'll talk 
um, Hollywood movies, not not Bollywood or Indian. Yeah. Uh, they will talk about Guns of Navarone, yeah. Roman Holiday, and a few others. They are stuck in a time loop. The people of Bengal are stuck in a time loop, and and they they will talk about the same type of movies, the one four or five movies that they have seen. Yeah. Um, and they pretend to be intellectual because these movies, like honestly speaking, most people wouldn't watch these movies. Um, any day of the week, hmm. okay, because these are depressing French movies or maybe some kind of movie with no end, okay. <laughs> but they watch these because the global elites watch. So Bengalis yeah. from the fifties, what the biggest difference between Swami Vivekananda time and this, you know, post uh, independence time is hmm. back then Swami Vivekananda used a global platform to talk about indigenous values, Indian hmm. values. Hmm. These people used a national platform to talk about foreign values. <laughs> yeah. So that's because they always wanted. So earlier the elites were in America and uh, England, and that's fine. Now what they have done is they've made themselves in the image of their makers, the American yeah. elites and the, right. the the European elites. So they watch the same yeah. kind of movies and they try to eat pork roast because those guys ate pork roast. Yeah, and I'm not even sure. not even the elites or or in general people of of any country of uh, in its entirety of that country they just want to emulate LA. Not even Texas. Yeah. Otherwise, they would be at least hard hardworking and, no, and no, be yeah, fit. Yeah. They, they want to uh, be uh, New Yorkers. <laughs> yes. Okay. And uh, if you talk about New Mexico and all that, mm -hmm. they'll watch those. Like they'll watch those things and they'll say, "Oh God, capitalism has failed." And yeah. Now I'll take my visa to America and uh, lick some capitalist ass. So that's yes. that's what they do. Yes. They they are the biggest hypocrites in the bloody world. Yeah. Okay. Is and there uh, is there any need to uh, in some way so called let's say break away from this uh, casteism that's going on in academia or or movies in Bengal or is it just an observation to 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 point out exactly why the the stupidity is going on? So why why call them say... why call Bengal the most caste society? It may be factual, but why bring it up? No, there there needs to be an improvement, a great improvement in public education. Hmm. And that will enable people. So, so first, you first step to solving a problem is addressing there's a problem. Hmm. When I say casteism, I don't yeah. say this will forever continue or has forever been there. Hmm. We hmm. need to have a more free market approach. We need to have more better quality schools and colleges here yeah. for the masses. But when I say for the masses, hmm. I mean that uh, not opening fifty government schools where nobody attends. Right. I yeah. mean improving the standard of reading and education hmm. make education tough again i'm sorry it's yeah. it's, it's, it's Absolutely. Uh, it declines uh, i i've been abroad and i i noticed that in certain places where people were doing really well in hmm. universities and colleges hmm. they they had some of the most difficult exams in school and schools yeah, and actually, okay. the schools which are infamous for being extremely tough, South Point, Lamarts, no wonder they create the most number of Bengali NRIs. Because that, yes. that skill set is appreciated in a free market economy. Yes, if you tell a kid in, in a village that, you know, no matter what you do, you pass till class 10, hmm. and uh, they will stop studying, and then yeah. you give them the utter rubbish to study in school, yeah. which is like, uh, I don't know, the chief minister's poems and stuff. Yeah. What do yeah. you expect them to, uh, would, you, would they understand or want to read a Tolstoy or a Charles Dickens or or even Rabindranath or Rabindranath, forget Rabindranath is a cliche at this point, forget yeah. that. Yeah. Even a even a Sharachandra Chattopadhyay or a or a Bonkim Chandra, they would never appreciate or understand any of this. Absolutely, right? It it it, it begins by telling people you are not infants. Hmm. This infantilization of the lower castes, this infantilization right. of soft players, bigotry of low expectations. Yes, that needs to stop. We need to tell tell people that you you are better than this. You need to live up to better standards and you can be better. And I think How? that is the message of Swami I Vivekananda. think that's insanely important I, and I agree with it 100%. Uh, but is that at all possible? <laughs> it's not going to happen from the politicians. Who the fuck is it going to come from? No, no, that that can happen with a political change. Look at look at um, UP, hmm. right? I, I, I mean, look at uh, where we were and we it all happened because of uh, a, a, some governments even under the British, hmm. some governments that did try to make the situation better, 
hmm. for some people like so so i don't i'm not overtly critical of the british for another reason because hmm. they weren't the worst kind of colonizers we could have had yeah. we they did um, if you think about it hindutva the, the 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 seeds of hindutva actually came up under them because hmm. they their schooling produced people like swami vivekananda and aurobindo absolutely okay i mean i'm not saying they made them hindutvas yeah, hindutvavadis yeah. but they provided them with the intellectual they they challenged their intel, intellect sufficiently yeah. for them to create something new in their thought process and True. think about it these guys went abroad these guys hmm. went to different countries and spoke as equals to their foreign counterparts Fair can enough. the post left uh times can we imagine anyone doing that in bengal right exactly now? and even jay sai deepak points out that before independence there were nationalist historians and comic historians there was radha kumud mukherji rc mojumdar jodunath sarkar there yeah, were yeah, no yeah, such yeah. people after independence yes this was a this is neo colonialism this pretends yeah. to be like this is uh, if you watch that uh, bhagat singh movie by uh, ajay devgan they said gore sahab chale gaye bhole sahab baith gaye okay <laughs> so this is even worse because bhole sahab is apparently much worse than the gore sahab because gore yeah. sahab at least they had some they through their critic criticism of india or whatever hmm. they produced some kind of intellectual capacity among the bengalis here hmm. but the same way, when is completely in decline post the 1950s yeah we must uh, i don't want to sound like don't we make bengal great again okay mm. so <laughs> so the truth is that the best way we can do it is by um, again like you have mentioned in the past improving law and order yeah uh, creating a better education system and by better i don't mean 50 schools mm. better schools better teachers uh, yeah. challenge people challenge how, the stu- how are we going to hire better teachers unless we offer salaries like private schools or actually salaries actually, are probably higher in government schools right how do we get better teachers in government schools oh the this is e- easy because bengalis are so used to working on low salaries hmm. that's that's not the problem the hiring process needs to be better uh, right right bengalis work for like peanuts if you go to some schools and colleges hmm. and ask them the salaries and you, then you go to a uh, school in bihar or odisha and ask them the salaries hmm. you will hmm. notice that there's almost a 40 to 50% difference in the salaries hmm so yeah. that's not a problem yeah. that's not a problem people here uh, the salary is not a problem the problem is how people get jobs number yeah. one number two is how the government so i remember when yogi came to power first thing mm-hmm. he did was there were these cheating mafias exactly in exam yes he beat the living daylights out of them yeah that needs to be done cheating in all forms yeah strictness needs to be imposed today you want to be like singapore Singapore is one of the you know most uh, you know the most important anti-corruption laws in the world. Hmm. They kill people just for having drugs. They they yeah. they have some of the most difficult education systems in the world. Even okay. Dubai, even Dubai, Saudi Arabia, yes. and actually UAE or Dubai or Abu Dhabi, at least you could or one could argue it's basically heaven on earth today. It's because of such strong law and order uh, legislation. It's insanely yeah, yeah. harshly treated. You can't expect a Dubai or a Singapore. Uh, the the worst part is Lee Kuan Yew, the first pri- prime minister of Singapore, said that I want to make Singapore the Calcutta of the Southeast. Okay, I wish he were alive. I I can, we could do a planchet one day and ask him. Do you still hold your? I I like what what happened to us? What yeah. happened? Communism happened. Yeah, and I want to then confirm with you one thing, which Sanjeev Sanyal said, and I. Uh, I thought, yeah, what a cool thing to say because when I was listening to it, I was already a libertarian. Then I gave it some second thought, but I don't see a diff- disagreement even today after thinking about it a lot. Which is, he said that economics killed everything in in Bengal, the bad economics. So therefore, yeah. we don't have a Satyajit Ray today. We don't have a Rubinwa today. We don't even have a Swami Vivekanand today. So uh, yeah. some some people argue that no, at least we had Ritu Porno, or we have we still have some Bengali directors who were appreciated outside. But I I have argued with those people that it's probably probably because it's it's that sort of bigotry of low expectations that wow you come from bengal and such an impoverished country and even then you make movies which are kind of at least watchable <laughs> was it was it because of that or was rituparna ghosh anywhere near to what satyajit ray was in equivalent to in the entire world and where is our next swami vivekanand and is that ever going to happen anytime soon no no i wouldn't i wouldn't say that a swami vivekanand cannot come up again hmm. okay this has this land has always 
you know uh produced great men it's just a matter of time men and women hmm. um but the thing here is um the 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 what you just said about rituvarna ghosh and all rituvarna ghosh isn't a very good director in my opinion i'm sorry i i i i just don't see how this is why his movies appeal i watched i watched his bomkesh i fell asleep in the middle yeah. i watched uh his shop uh, charitra kalponik i didn't even understand why he made it black and white i think right and and why what is the point of his movies what mm. is the point you're trying it's intellectual masturbation yeah it is nothing more if you want to make a godar go ahead but you're sasta godar you're not a bengali today tapan sinha <laughs> is my favorite director because he made a movie called golpo holo shotti hmm. on a bengali middle class household hmm. and it is a brilliant movie hmm. okay shottojit ray made a movie on boro bazar hmm. and that is a brilliant movie he yeah. made a movie called shimaboddho yeah where he talks about a small firm in bengal and how corruption happens and all hmm. even the even when they were talking like communists with limited budgets they had their movie at a point their movie had a moral their movie had a end their movie had right um why viewers... it had a why yes what is the point of bariwali yeah i'm sorry what is the point of bariwali yeah it's a freudian you know you you read too much freud and then you realize oh i could do freud in bangla what's mm. the point exactly you're just uh, emulating some austrian or some british or some french where at least you know we have a ton of literature from the 1900s yeah just make movies on that yeah. movies and serial True. just on that and this is this has been one of my uh, most significant realizations from working in the industry in in whatever little capacity i do that i don't understand why are the some of these people even making the web series or the short film or the movies that they are making which i'm working on most of the paid work i've done even if someone no. put a gun to my head i would not watch that myself okay so wh- yep. what is the point are they doing it just because they thought when they were young they they thought that they'll be big movies uh, directors etc they'll they'll win some award or is it just a case of black money getting laundered or is it just some issue it's of uh, sleeping Adi around Purush. with lots of heroines adi purush <laughs> <laughs> okay black money ko white banana hai i i i don't see any other point to all this intellectual masturbation and all that's it that's it and hmm. most if you think about it most most of srijit's movies even srijit's movies hmm he basically copy shottojit ray all his movies it's basically are, a copy of even feluda yesterday i i saw dasham avatar and i realized that it's just a barrage of cool dialogues there's not a yeah. significant story his his movie one uh, that on hotel ki shahjahan regency and all yeah. that was on chorongi Yeah. His autograph was on Nayok. Yeah. His his uh, b- 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 this thing the Proshenjit movie which is so famous Baita Baita Shravan. Shravan is on 7. Yeah. Okay. Uh Dasham Avatar is on 7 or whatever. Yeah. So that's it. His he just like what's the point? Are you trying to prove your Neo Shottojit Ray? What are you? Yeah, that's that at point, least a good why to have. But uh, some other director yeah. I don't even know why <laughs> why they are making this stuff. Ritu Parna Ghosh just tell do a, do an exercise those bengalis who are who are really proud of their culture sit through two rituvarna ghosh movies back to back and if you do not fall asleep i will give you 500 bucks i don't think anyone the, would have that experience that's what i get from lokir vandar okay i i I, i don't think anyone would have such an such a boring experience watching anandattam films why didn't uh, his movies ever ever take up or they well, do Anjan they do Dutta, now he, when he is also making sridhi type of, of movies No, Anjan Dutt had a share of these kind of uh, Ritu Parna Ghosh type movies. I But not in Bong Connection, Cholo. Let's go. They were they were anti-list list movies. Yeah, Madly Bong Connection. They were breaking Bong so many things. Bong Connection, Cholo. Let's go. A lot of these other movies. Even uh, I think Revolver Rohsho. Anjan Dutt has always been a less pretentious person right. than than the typical uh, Bengali intellectual. Yes. Okay. He's been less pretentious. He loves the you know Bahar. He loves. he's you know uh, 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 i think he loves to drink a bit and he is fine with it he's just he's a very chill dude if if yes. you, if you can think of it yeah. but the rest of the people they take themselves too seriously yeah. take themselves way too seriously is that good but for they, for your career then in bengal what what is that good for your career then taking yourself seriously and and pretending to be a shottojit and robinath bhakto 
it works so far it and, works uh, seems to work and uh, but, to, but to dive, huh, honestly it has its limits me. because that's why i'm telling you this this kind of pretentiousness falls flat uh, if you look at the current state of bengali movies yeah very few good movies are being made and worst is that right now web series gulo je toiri hocche those are those are complete hacks of hindi or tamil or some other web series yes and and uh, this this industry will fall into the abyss unless yes. they produce a uh, critical work they will right. fall completely yes. mane i mean uh, the tollywood will be exterminated yeah in in so. a matter of years yes because if if srijit even even srijit is making such a movie which is which is basically a decline from his work 10 years back i don't see any hope for from tollywood at the moment because even if you now fund who the fuck is going to use the fund and make a good movie i don't i don't understand but we'll get it yeah. get to politics now a little uh, some yeah. some uh, uh, another interesting viewer has has again asked uh, another question that wh- how is bengal communism or bengal cpm different from kerala does it seem to be then that kerala's cpm also was a little better than bengal's cpm not much kerala hmm. always had a steady fund from you know uh, the middle eastern countries and all Hmm. that because of kerala's old connections with the middle east yeah right but they they didn't really do anything about it so they yeah. had a steady <laughs> in, influx of money from there yeah that's why they seem slightly better and also the keralians i guess they they get bored easily so they quoted hmm. them out every now and then hmm. what we have is a more uh, seven time communist government which is way worse hmm. and and frankly the keralians I think that because the so, so see free market works again yeah. here. Even when you have horrible parties like the Communist Party, hmm. when the Congress comes into a competitive mode with them, not hmm. the Congress of West Bengal, which hmm. was called Tormut by us, <laughs> means over it's it's red, it's green on the outside and red in the in the inside. So even even when there is free market in uh, you know the 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 politics of hmm. Kerala, yeah. then you see that it's that at least they didn't destroy the economy as bad as the west bengal situation yeah why not was it were their policies better or just because they had so much ongoing influx of gulf money firstly probably certainly the gulf money thing is a factor in kerala has always been in the hmm. last maybe uh, 50 years or so hmm. uh 50 na i mean maybe 30 years or so hmm. but one very important aspect has been the fact that this competitive thing with congress Congress here was a perfect opposition. Congress, uh, okay, who you know just chill with the CPM. The CPM, right? Uh, yes, you would never like the strong Congress leaders. There were like five or six strong Congress leaders. So many mm. throw in my area. Yeah, yeah. Um, others in different areas, right? Like Shubhrat Mukherjee in the other places and all. Yeah, Adi even these, now. Yeah, yeah. Munikhan Chaudhary. So Chodhari. these people, they they had a deal with the left. They were like yeah. the left was like. you know uh, you can go into snooze mode most of the time you can have your mutton rice and just fall yeah, asleep yeah even in colleges and sfi and chhatra parishad basically collaborated for elections yeah 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 so so you never had a free market of politics here either yeah and that, that is why yeah. mamta banerji came out of uh, congress but then she could have been that opposition that congress was being in kerala why didn't she do it she did it only after it was profitable for her to do so uh now there is a view that mamuta was actually kind of uh, uh, you know told by the left to form the tmc to break the congress's back so when mm. was the tmc getting from 98 there's a crisis yeah. of image in, in the cpim in the post 90s right the whole yeah. world is uh, the country is liberalized yeah but you are still in living in the 1970s mm. so what happens is people are getting angry mm. at jyoti basu yeah now what do you do jyoti basu might lose Yeah. So you do two things. You break the Congress into two halves, right? Hmm. So the Congress vote bank kind of becomes split in the middle. Yeah. And then what you do is you um uh you know you put a new chief minister in place instead of Jyoti Basu. Hmm. So a new face that takes away the anti incumbency. Hmm. And uh, you make Anand Bajaj and all do nice pieces about him. How he's gonna build the economy and he's gonna change the left. then yeah. brand buddha is created for since 2000 uh, early 90 uh, late 90s to 2005 or 6 brand buddha is yeah. reigning yeah and that is when you will see a huge qualitative change in bengali cinema and music and everything yeah okay 
Now again, when he declines, the economy declines, the same thing happens. Right. And Buddha Babu was the Gorbachev of the Communist Party in mm. Bengal. Yeah. He decided to become democratic at the wrong time. Mm. So, I mean, yeah. people, people in Bengal are strange. Like, people in Bengal will vote for you as long as you kill your opposition. People will stop voting for you when you stop killing your opposition. That, that, that seems to be factually true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we'll get to politics directly. Uh, what do you think is to, going to be the impact of CA in Bengal? Is there going to be any effect electorally and Huge. morally? Did BJP really need to do it to get votes? Would it not win without doing yeah, CA? Yeah, so, so the Motua vote has been kind of taken for a ride for the last few years. Hmm. The Motuas have been demanding this since 2003, if I'm not mistaken. Who are the Motuas? The Motuas are uh, Dalits, if I can call them that, from uh, East Bengal, who okay. came after the partition primarily. Is uh, Dalit a technical a term or is Dalit a random coalition of non-Brahmins or, or the anyone below the third Varna? Dalit is a artificial creation Yeah. in the 1930s and 40s. Yeah. Dalit term did not exist ever. It's a political term, essentially. Right. And it can encompass practically anyone that they saw as being downtrodden, quote-unquote. Hmm. So, so even if Mutwas themselves were claiming to be Brahmins in the 1911 census, hmm. uh, the, they they became Shirul castes okay. because the because the state associ- So what happened is it's all about incentives. So when the state incentivized being Shirul caste, hmm. a lot of people did who were earlier calling them the Brahmin, Rajput, this and that, God knows, hmm. they themselves suddenly said, ah, we are actually Shirul castes, you know. Hmm. So that is, it's all about incentives. Caste is all about incentives. It is an economic yeah. and political system. It has nothing yeah. to do with religion and uh, this thing. Hmm. Uh, religion and, yeah. and ideology and all. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah. Motuas, yes. You were talking about the Motuas. The Motuas, yeah. they, since their, uh, you know, the 1971 ruling by Indira Gandhi, where she said that anyone who's coming from Bangladesh will be given de facto citizenship. Yeah. That thing did not apply to many of them because some of them came after the 1970s. Okay. So we have an influx of Mutuas till like early 2000s and 2010. And by according to statistical data from Dhaka University hmm. by Professor Barkat there, 600 Hindus escape Bangladesh every day. Hmm. A large chunk of them happen to be Mutuas and lower castes. Hmm. So by that logic, the, a large majority of the Mutuas who have settled in Bengal hmm. Are essentially lower castes, and they they are they are not de facto citizens here, who came even like those who came in the 1940s and all. Hmm. So their citizenship creates some problems. Like some of them don't get passports and stuff. Sometimes they 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 have to prove that they have been citizens. So okay. what the CA does is it makes them default citizens. Okay. It simplifies the process. Okay. It says that if you are here for six years. Hmm. Then you can apply for citizenship and especially if you are a religiously persecuted community hmm. in Bangladesh or Pakistan and all and Afghanistan, then you are default giving citizenship, hmm. which which is what they have been asking for since 2003. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, so this demand of 2003 took 20 years, but finally it's been given and this will create... Uh, yet another like the Mutuas are already voting for the BJP like 60 to 70 percent of them vote for BJP in every election almost okay. except 2021 okay they got a bit disillusioned in 2021 but uh, this time I'm expecting at least 70 percent of them to vote for BJP okay it's a huge huge vote bank in South Bengal hmm, right and uh, and and anything else can can electorally can anything else come out of CA except Mutuas voting will people be pissed off or people will feel some extra love for bjp uh, for for doing the caa i think that um hindutva has taken a hold in the public discourse of bengal whether the people in their ivory towers accept it or not i see now it's just a matter of time to for us to see uh, the the 2024 lok sabha results will show us that not just uh, anti corruption wave if you if I'll tell my tell tell the audience to, to do one thing. If you go to uh, any Bengali news page and see a pro BJP or anti BJP news, see the comments. Yeah. Now there's a translate option. See the comments. Yeah, always. Okay. <laughs> you will see a nice uh, you know wave of Hindutva happening in in the middle class Bengalis or even lower yeah. middle class Bengalis. Yeah. Which was previously even I would say five years ago. 
practically non existent yeah. practically non existent yes right so this will this election will show that hmm it's just a matter of time and uh, why why 70% an, uh, an audience member is asking why 70% of motuas why not all of them i am going by csds data which which actually said around 55 to 60% Hmm. So I'm assuming there will be a boost after the CA rules. So hmm. that will probably go up to 70%. Why not 100%? Probably because uh, Hindus never really vote as a block ever yeah, yeah. in Bengal. And uh, there are some of them who have benefited from TMC rule. We cannot deny that. Like some right. of them did get houses and cars and whatever they wanted. Yeah. Some of them, not hmm. all. Hmm. Not the majority in any way. Maybe ten to twenty percent of them did get it. Their mm. families and they will be voting for the TMC. Mm. But this this will like TMC will evaporate after twenty twenty four. The the year passes, you will not notice that there was a party. There was a party called Bangla Congress in the nineteen seventies. It completely evaporated after the uh, after seventy two, when it lost the election. <laughs> it was led by Ajay Mukherjee, another Brahmin communist leader, uh, not communist Congress leader. Who broke away from Congress, formed the uh, Jukto Front, uh, which was the uni- United Front yeah. government in the 1967. Yeah. And when they went from power, Congress rigged the election heavily mm. uh, in 1972. Shiddhartha Sankarai became the chief minister. Yeah. And uh, the Bangla Congress overnight disappeared. Like there was no party called the Bangla <laughs> Congress. Like if you actually yeah. look for it, the last time they contested election was the election they lost. Okay. So Congress, Congress is very interesting. Like Congress, uh, the offshoots of Congress never survive much. Hmm. Right. It has a high, um, let's say, high infant mortality. High mortality rate. rate. Yeah. <laughs> infant mortality because yeah. Mamata Banerjee and all these leaders are essentially products of the Congress. Yeah. This reminds me. Uh, does Obhijit Ganguly uh, joining BJP or becoming any significant face uh, if BJP wins? Or becoming the CM face in some way, or becoming the CM, or in any significant way, is is that bad in a way that again the 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 urban liberal upper caste Bengali uh, voice gets a foothold because then he will have the biggest microphone. Shubendu won't be having the big, biggest microphone, and then again his Shubindu voice becomes also voice not becomes non-elite. Nice. If you think about it, Shubendu is not non-elite in any way. His okay. family has been in power in different ways for the last three or four generations. Yes, I, I heard that He's even like like every day, hundred people get hundred poor people get fed in his home in in, yeah. in the village. But so, that is a village elitism that that Bengali urban yeah, that is the most doesn't care about. kind of elitism. Yeah, and and Obijit Ganguly's is a very typical urban upper caste elitism. Yeah, uh, if I can call it elitism, he is see he has he's like us. He's a middle class bong, right? Yeah, yeah. He's not very different from our parents. Or yes. Whatever. So, yeah. So the thing is that he's an honest man, and that's all good. Yeah. I have dark night. I get dark night vibes from here. Like, why? Why did the dark night? Why did the Batman take over? Because we let the scum take over. So then we had we allowed the dark night, the Batman to clean clean up our streets. Yeah. So that's great. Uh, Vijay Ganguly has uh, everyone's respect and love. That's yeah. great. But if we need to improve Bengal, we need mm. an administrator. Okay. Uh. uh an administrator who is experienced in doing some dirty work. We have to stop lying to ourselves that uh, politicians don't do, cannot do dirty work. Politicians mm. do the most amount of dirty work mm. in the world. And by dirty, I don't mean stealing money and all. By dirty, I mean uh, perhaps doing something like an encounter, which is mm. necessary. Mm. Now, for that, you need somebody with uh, a, a heart of steel, uh, uh, an administrator with a with a uh, you know strong hand yeah and i don't see anyone but shubhendu Dikari having that in Bengal right now hmm. and he's uh, the most popular politician we have seen in the last 30 years or so yeah then the counter argument would be from from commies obviously who are, commies are basically uh, anyone who is non right in bengal uh, the first argument would be then or, or from someone who is planning to uh, vote for bjp who might end up voting for bjp they would argue that then, then why BJP at all? If the so-called quote-unquote same thing is going to go on under under Shubhendu? Uh no, I don't think so. Because the thing with the BJP is, um, for example, you will notice that nowadays people actually talk about Tripura. Yeah. Even <laughs> even five years ago, if you ask somebody what's going on in Tripura right now, yeah, nobody knew what was happening. So BJP hmm. has this habit of attracting the media attention. Hmm. 
yeah. wants to attract media attention and national no so this is what the left does the left creates this uh you know uh, fort of attention where it rules like a like a oligarch like a like, like a dictator like a hitler hmm. right uh, and it doesn't allow the media is also complicit the media never questions why 100 people die in every election here so the media yeah. allows this to continue because yeah. their masters are leftists so hmm. once this left is gone from power completely hmm. whatever form of left is left hmm. then you will see a high degree of media f- focus on bengal because then this is the battleground where bjp has to prove itself yeah they first thought up will flop UP yeah. didn't flop yeah now they will say bengal will flop and yeah. their eyes will be on bengal so maybe that's not a bad thing because so you're saying you that is going to prevent from shubhendu doing any kind of uh, uh, dictatorial uh, fascist shenanigans uh, yeah i mean dictatorial matlab there are two two aspects of this do mm. you do encounters do you do bulldozers yeah. what do you want to do obijit ganguly himself has said i am i love bulldozer yeah right yeah. so if you ask people in the village do you want bulldozer they said yes we want bulldozer baba yeah okay now is that fascism i don't know i i don't know honestly is is it is it not fascism to think that uh, a person uh, you know who by a, the by the name of a mughal emperor can come into your house at any time and rape your wife is mm. that not fascism which mm. has been going on in bengal for the last uh, 40 years or so yeah because let's not forget sheikh shahjan was a product of uh, cpim he yeah. originally rigged elections for the cpim Yeah, yeah. Some people were saying that the CPI MLA Nirapado Choudhury first got him the. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They have a, they act like Nirapado is uh, the greatest uh, warrior against fascism in the recent times. Hmm. Nirapado's election agent was Shah Jahan. Hmm. So, so, so you, I'll I'll give you two thumb rules about the left in India or Bengal. First thumb rule is whatever they say is good is actually bad, and whatever they say is bad is actually good. Hmm. Okay, for long term. you know the country the other thing is any problem in bengal if you take its dna sample you will find it in the left hmm. so because of the left the education system went down the drain because of the left there are no businesses because of the left people like shahjahan and all these people came to power hmm. because of the left you have um, selling of uh, jobs of teachers right yeah you think the tmc would do this actually no the left started all this hmm they just didn't sell it they gave it to party cutters hmm. so tmc made it a free market thing they were like oh why give it to party cutters when if you pay some money yeah. uh, you just give it to the highest bidder yeah which right? is why many uh, party cutter who could not pay it they did not get the jobs which is why they are in a confused state yeah, of yeah, mind yeah. right It's now total free market of corruption here yeah so that all will hopefully stop because once the media focus is here hmm. and once so much corruption has been exposed hmm. even people in the bjp right now who would want to do corruption would hmm. actually i would i would say it it would be a welcome if if people like prashant bhushan who file cases at a drop of a hat yeah. would file 50 cases against hmm. the government here hmm. about corruption if they get any news yeah because honestly this is another problem of bengal hmm. which has which has actually come up through the left not because of tmc hmm. yeah the left its father tmc just palpos ke bada kar diya yeah that's what it did yeah then uh, so you are uh, for for a future cm candidate or or anything uh, any position of power politically in bengal you are preferring shubhendu over uh, obijit ganguly why exactly what, what in what ways is shubhendu going to be handling it better shubhendu has been an anti leftist person for the last 40 to 50 years people are unaware of this his family fought against the communists hmm. he defeated hmm. lokhon shed in 2006 uh, lokhon shed was very powerful in medinipur yeah he defeated hmm. him uh, despite tmc candidates losing a lot of seats yeah. he became a councillor in in bengal in 1995 when everywhere you looked there was a communist yes so shubhendu adhikari's dedication against the left is remains unchallenged now if he was a bit corrupt i don't care honestly because who who will take <laughs> on mamata energy except somebody like him and his record of understanding the left defeating them on their own ground hmm. that very few people in bengal can claim yeah mamata energy did not defeat the left she was made to win by the congress yeah but shubhendu actually defeated the left when it came to you know uh, yeah. and she even defeated he even defeated mamata energy while yeah. she is the cm 
and in fact so, mamata banerjee also defeated the left with a lot of help from shubhendu shubhendu's ground work yeah 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 without shubhendu nondigram would not have happened yeah nondigram andolan happened because of shubhendu yeah he gave it its uh, form and power mm. yeah and he is a very clever person he is a very a- able administrator people don't know but kathi purosabha is one of the best the one of the few municipalities in bengal that actually work <laughs> and that was established by him i so, see so There yeah, was a I have many when... viewers from Tam Tam look interestingly, but why not Obijit Ganguly? Why can't he do these things? Obijit Ganguly is a celebrity. Yes, he's he is. He's a good, maybe a good-hearted celebrity, but he's a celebrity. Hmm. You can't expect Batman to be the des- des- you know the BA. That's the whole question of the Dark Knight, right? Yeah. Can Batman contest elections? <laughs> yeah. Vote for me. No. <laughs> so <laughs> could he do that? You hmm. need a Harvey Dent. and i'm not hmm. saying harvident jaisa ekdam clean image ho but hmm. harvident was a good administrator hmm. who did the did certain things like who played games with the batman just to get the joker yeah right so you need that but batman ko chief minister prime minister nahi bana sakte hmm yeah right and uh, uh, what what does shubhendu need to do in order to turn bengal around I don't know. And how much of that will you th- do you think will happen in the first five or how much will happen so in five first five years? See, Bengal is very easy. I I think Bengal ruling Bengal is relatively easy. There's mm. a re- reason for this because the people here are so used to fascism and dictatorship by the ruling party yeah. that implementing changes will be very very easy in my opinion. Mm. People here have lost their spinal cords. Hmm. And honestly, nobody gives a damn about what you know an artist or a singer says anymore here, yeah. because they've lost their credibility after so many years. Did Bengal Bengal ever have a spine, or was it just a uh, few Sri Aurobindo Subhash Bose, or was was the time of 1920s and 30s and late 19th century Bengal uh, really the best phase in the history of Vanga ever? No, I mean think about it. Uh, these people, the people you just mentioned, Subhash hmm. Bose. Um, Orobin Sri Ruchi Orobindo Swami Vivekananda they were fighting for in a sense they were fighting for the underdogs yeah they were fighting for a force an ideology that was on the losing side essentially true now cut to the 70s when you are fighting against the government the naxalites and all <coughs> but they are fighting for china they are not fighting uh, uh, against a hegemony they are fighting for a hegemony Yeah so I'm sorry but I think we lost our spinal cord after the 30s or 40s I see okay. So what Perhaps does Shubhendu need to do with Shyam Prasad Mukherjee maybe 50 early 50s yeah. that's it <laughs> Yes what yeah. would Shubhendu need to do to uh, t- turn around Bengal I mean basically he could be a yogi look alike and do his work that's it That's all people want here people want a himanta or a yogi and I think he will deliver Hmm He is a clever man. I think he will deliver if if given the opportunity. And uh, how do you think uh, CA affects the rest of the country now electorally? Electorally, does, does anyone think... getting citizenship mean that? No, I don't think CA is uh, relevant to a lot of people beyond Bengal and uh, Tripura and all these places. So I I don't think it will make a huge, uh, you know, uh, dent, uh, huge change. Hmm. but it just signals intent it signals mm. intent on the part of the central government i i don't think hindus in i don't know odisha really care about ca mm. right i don't think hindus in uh, madhya pradesh care about ca that yeah. much it doesn't mm. it doesn't concern them to be very honest yeah the primary influx of hindus uh, was in bengal and uh, the northeast so yeah there it is where it will have the, the population demography there the demography of the state Hmm. I think there has been a unity at the ground level among Hindus, hmm. which I think was absent till the '90s and the early 2000s. Hmm. Okay, whether you are Bengali or Assamese, I think that has been they have been united by, let's say, a political lead, leadership as well under Himanto and as as well as you know. So a, another factor here is the fact that the the northeast is being finally developed. Yeah, the northeast was treated like some kind of a rabbit dog till the uh, till the early 2000s and all right hmm. nobody developed roads there nobody did anything there was no healthcare infrastructure nothing yeah yeah absolutely every, every oh. other weekend there was a bomb blast in assam i went to assam to visit some of my relatives in in when i was in class 9 and uh, we 
near by we heard a bomb blast and no one <laughs> reacted the the previous yeah, yeah, yeah. we went to bongaigao and the previous day we went to visit uh, guwahati and came back to bongaigao next day and and that day we heard that just yesterday where we were roaming about roaming about in that market in yeah. guwahati a bomb blast happened and, and two people died and no one gave a shit no one even reacted oh, okay a bomb blast some people died who, who cares <laughs> that, that it was that casual in assam yep no so that's the thing like it's now developing so even development has a role like it's it none of these work separately like we discuss yeah. economics economics cannot be divorced from politics politics right. cannot be divorced from economics hmm. these cannot yeah. be develop, uh, different from religion entirely like the west and west maybe nahi hota hai ultimately right yeah. so anyway yeah i mean that's how i see things going i i'm hopeful about bengal honestly because hmm. there is a resurgence that even i didn't expect in my, maybe the last 5 years or so i see yeah and uh, this this assam question reminds me uh, what do you think uh, of uh, regional pride versus national pride is there a middle ground or should regional pride be ignored i don't know how to how to uh, uh, accommodate these two things these seem to be on opposite ends so uh, my understanding of what regional pride entails is regional pride often means that there will be a group of oligarchs some same kind of people who will rule because they identify as bengali or assamese or rajasthani or gujarati or whatever right hmm. um but it is never for the actual people for the for the poor people or farmers or laborers and all hmm. it is typically because some group of families want power for themselves now hmm. in bengal it is bangla pakkho in assam it was asu and all these places hmm. right so uh it has always been like that that some like families wanted power so they are ah, now we have to fight for bengalis hmm. but once they actually did get power hmm. all they did was oppress the people in their communities hmm. so i am totally against the federal structure for that reason we have abused hmm. the federal so bengal ka matlab history is all about hmm. the abuse of federal structure right we have used the police as our own gundas not hmm. our i mean the ruling parties have used the police as gundas yeah the people have re- the elites have leaked elections hmm. to keep, keep them in power yeah they have destroyed the economy they have destroyed the lives of i mean millions of people hmm. just so that certain family stay in power isse bada casteism kaha ho sakta hai yes regionalism is a just a variety of casteism where certain dominant castes keep power hmm. and they they don't allow others to rise hmm we we should think about creating a unified police system we police if if it's controlled centrally hmm. then stuff will improve like really fast i would hmm. say i see that is where i think bengal lost out and other places lost out we had federalism hmm. and i don't was a federalism we... not even true fed- federalism yeah 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 we have a very stupid form of federalism yeah so hum log we tried to be america we ended up being like I don't know. I mean, we are like America. I mean, California has gone to shit, right? So, <laughs> yes. I guess we are like America. So, uh, so what do yeah. you think? Can we? Uh, get, uh, is there any benefit we can get out of a movement like Bangla Pakko? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I I don't want to answer. <laughs> Sorry, so why st- not? <laughs> Bangla Pakko is a joke. I mean, their leader looks like a katla match. I I don't know. I mean. Yeah, but the argument would be people. that since the South also does it, since even Marathis do it, since now even the Kannadigas are doing yeah, it, why Bangla not Pakko us? Bangla Pakko trying to act like Shiv Sena and you know DMK. Is yeah, but like, they are so united. Why not us? Johnny Lever wanted. Why aren't Johnny Lever wanted to act like uh, John Abraham? So that doesn't work. I'm sorry, Bengalis just don't have it in them. <laughs> Some people like Bangla ke Gujarat hote devo na. Arey, that's like. If 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 Rajpal Yadav said, "I mean, I mean, I can't have it," are how will you? You don't have it in you, man. You don't. So you are saying it should be an economy. aspirational model. You can't. You don't have an economy. You don't have basic political and democratic sense to conduct an election without a few deaths. Right, right. You don't have education to appreciate hmm. basic, you know, like decent poetry or movies. <laughs> you don't have. You don't have anything. So what? What? Pride? Do we have left one dude who won the Nobel Prize? Which, by the way, we lost. The Nobel Prize was stolen. Robin Van Tucker's Nobel Prize, which was the first Nobel Prize in Asia, was stolen. Yeah. 
no we we lost the one thing that we were proud of the, the, so what we still have amartya sen and dovijit banerji i'm going to cut the line now i just can't take this anymore i'm sorry this is so, no so the the bangla pakko argument would be that uh, they are taking our jobs we don't the, have jobs to take bihar is our bani bihar is and upis and odia people are taking away our jobs i don't know don't think odias are taking away our jobs anymore they we need jobs How in odia how many bengali workers plumbers and laborers yeah they would that's have if bihar is did not take away those, those jobs that's the argument yeah that's that's why you see a, a large number of migrant laborers on bengalis yeah who go for certain semi skilled labor in places like gujarat up and uh, other places so also entire middle the, east delhi waiters everything you don't have jobs in bengal the 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 wage rates here are so low people live like animals in gujarat but they stay there for wages hmm yeah you pay people ek, here if you engage a carpenter yeah they'll take 600 500 rupees you engage a carpenter in hyderabad they'll take nothing less than 2000 rupees <laughs> your wages are low what will you even pay people even that's why wrong? even after the gujarat riots there was no exodus of muslims that was the, probably the first time in the history of genocides <laughs> that the victim group did not even leave that place yeah and bengal has like the thing is if we go by bangla pakkho's you know thing is just they they are just like i said they want their Uh, they, they so so there are two ways you can be a leader hmm. you can create a um, uh, you know movement out of thin air hmm. which these people do right a stupid movement with no basis but because you form an interest group the political party say oh okay right. you want a position of leadership so there are deals right usually hmm. this is what happens these are underhanded ways to get jobs and security yeah nothing else yeah this is i would say it's good to take a churchillian attitude towards them Okay. When Churchill saw Hitler taking uh, one land after the other, he was like, "This guy won't stop, so let's stop giving him land." And Neville Chamberlain was like, "No, let's give in to his demands. I think he'll stop after a while." Hmm. So guess who who was proven right? Hmm. So if BJP comes to power here, which is a uh, which is becoming increasingly likely, hmm. then the BJP should stop taking these jokers at face value hmm. and do what Jyoti Basu used to do. I would tell the BJP sometimes. Taking a Jyoti Basu approach to certain <laughs> activists is not a bad idea. Yeah, Lord Shubendu the... Adhikari was saying a few days back <laughs> that Jyoti Basu uni bhala kore tight dite. Ma mota ke? Yeah, and Shubendu knows this. Just like yeah. we all do in the bottom of our hearts that. And I'll tell you something else. If 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 the BJP becomes too democratic, the people of Bengal won't like it. <laughs> they are so used to murder murders and all that. They are not gonna. be like they're going to think what is this so i think the best thing for bengalis like whichever government comes next is to give them a basu treatment if i can call it basu or even uh, you know siddhartha shankar rai treatment and uh, you know remind them that the state has what weber said the state has monopoly over power right monopoly over yeah and even monopoly violence over violence yeah so that's that's what they should remind them Then, sometimes are you a proud bengali or a just a proud indian what what would you be proud of if you are bengali <laughs> i am not proud of being a bengali i am proud that you know i've been born in this state in a relatively privileged position myself hmm i'm proud of the fact that i am an indian because indian <coughs> economy hai to hum hai that is the fact yeah okay so i'm proud of the identity that actually serves my uh, purpose at this point and i would say being an indian has saved me not being right. a bengali actually right. right because the way bengal's economy was going if if the center did not go on keeping it and and feeding it it was going yeah. to be just uh, you know who takes up these south indian jokers they talk about Uh, the dmk and all not the people the hmm. political parties they keep talking about uh, how the north is uh, eating up all the resources and all yeah they should talk about states like bengal yeah which which contribute basically nothing in terms of gst hmm. and eat up like half its resources yeah and anyway through mafia giri and all they they they're, they're sending our so if you think about it half our gdp of bengal anyway hmm. which is quite low yeah half of it is is abroad because people are making their black money white hmm 
ओके इन इन फॉरेन लोकल्स एनी वे कुछ है नहीं जो था वो बाहर भेज दिया सो रहेगा क्या कुछ देर इज नथिंग देर इज नथिंग इन बेंगोल टू बी प्राउड ऑफ I see, and uh, this this reminds me of something. Uh, when I was in school and the Shingur movement was at its peak, we had an economics teacher who was uh, against industry. Okay, <laughs> that's the kind of economics wow. teachers we had. Wow, wow, wow! So uh, our economics teacher used to say that why aren't they making that factory in some place in Bengal where the land is in fact barren? Why are they making it uh, on on a fertile land? So what do you think we can do about that? Because we do have way more fertile land than Gujarat, etc. So do we go on making uh, industries on fertile lands, or basically we replace the idea of industrialization with just uh, high income agricultural jobs when when Shubendu or some good good person comes to power? I think uh, there's an economist Shudipto Guho. He has addressed this issue. He said, "Okay, car factories won't cut it anymore for Bengal." We should do what we did best: agro industries. Okay, okay. Sorry. That is the future. That is hmm. where uh, new startups and new economics should come, and uh, the government should spend its education, higher education resources on agrarian development and uh, R and D in hmm. the agrarian sector. Right. Be it GMO, be it better quality fertilizers, and be it uh, more drought-resistant crops and stuff, because we are hmm. going to be hit by water shortages soon. Right. and we need all this kind we need the government to fund high quality research okay we right. can't expect um, any <clears throat> anything that is uh, that is going to overnight change us like we expected with the see even if the tata nano factory happened okay hmm. let's let's take a hypothetical right hmm. Hmm. if the tata nano thing happened how many people do you think would get jobs what 1000 unless people. other Maybe fifty, sixty thousand, right? In a population of ten crore. Okay. Yeah. Now you would have to need other Ambani's and Adani's and other people to come in and invest similarly. Uh, yeah, theoretically, now, that was Buddha the Bhattacharya's plan. That that was going to create yeah. an environment which will bring more people. <coughs> But uh, yes, agreed. Uh, I'm not criticizing his plan. I mean, that was hmm. a necessity at that time, and we lost it, and yeah, we are suffering. Yeah, that ship has since. sailed probably. But but fact is that that won't make you. uh that won't elevate the economy much more than what buddha babu did hmm already hmm the elevation of the economy i would consider will happen only when the agrarian economy is also uplifted which is basically ankit shah's predictions that after uh, some some sort of big crash comes in in 2024 2025 large influx of investment is going to happen from the private indus- private sectors themselves we'll have to eat. into agriculture we'll have to eat that's the right. reality right we can do without laptops and computers and cars but yeah. you can't stop eating right like that that yeah. is the basic thing and norway if 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 netherlands could have like a nice agrarian economy hmm. i don't see why we can't yeah right and our our land bengal's fertile lands are probably still less destroyed than punjab and or places yeah, with yeah, yeah. face we too much droughts we didn't really i mean thanks to the cpim in strange ways like cpim yeah. did not destroy a lot of british institutions yeah cpim did not destroy a lot of old houses yeah CPIM did not implement much changes, so yeah, unintended yeah, we, consequences. Unintended, like it's it's one of those comedy movies, C grade movies, which turn out to be unintended comedies, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like that. It has some, uh, you know, the CPIM Buddha. Uh, I think Jyoti Babu would be best described as the disaster artist. <laughs> uh, so in in a in a sense, the art yeah. and the artist. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, an inter- I'm getting an interesting question here that Bengal could uh, restart its famous uh, shipbuilding industry. I, I, I honestly, I'm not qualified enough to comment on that. Hmm. But, okay. but yes, we were traders. Yeah, we were the land of Chhatrapati and all. So we were trade traders essentially. We had good, we had GMO type. You know, we had, we had not. What do you say? Stamp mar dete hai. Um, like. Like Uris, like the Rosogola thing and all that, right? We had like specialized products. We had like okay. a e- economy, okay, which had which was trading in stuff that wasn't available in other parts of the world, right? Hmm. Okay, stamp marte hai na kuch. I I keep forgetting that thing. Uh, okay. That that thing. Uh, we GI stamp, GI stamp okay, or something okay. like that. I see. GI GI tag or something. I right? see. Right. So we had an economy similar to that. Hmm. So why not? We we can re- reproduce a lot of that stuff. Hmm. Thanks so, to the lack of industrialization, we still have some traditional arts and crafts and 
old yeah. stuff in a way i you know you could take that as a blessing yeah true of course some unintended consequences will always happen yeah. and actually i just want to remind the uh, uh, audience here that i have forgotten to mention it in the last few days the the place we keep talking about tam lok from where abhijit ganguly is going to uh, going to get his candidature possibly and where shubhendu dikari is from and where a huge chunk of my my viewership comes from that place is the historical tamralipti okay or the tamralipta okay which you have read about in history books that was the ancient business hub of bengal that is where <laughs> shubhendu comes from um okay then last question uh, professor lies a lot uh, so, and uh, mysterious sociologist so how much can we uh, blame hinduism or sanatan principles or sanatan texts or brahmins for casteism by which i mean uh, varna based or jati based bad behavior if what uh, percentage look at, look at i i don't think we can consider that in percentages <laughs> but look at look at the people we pray to right we pray to swami vivekananda hmm. we pray to chaitanya mahaprabhu we pray to people who have essentially spoken of equality yes we have never prayed to someone per se who has said uh, let's degrade a group of people we never actually said we right. think about it like the religious aspect of uh, our existence never actually uh, lived off uh, differences in society per mm. se when mm. i say difference i mean economic and social differences mm. and even political differences now in my view having studied quite a bit about caste and status and all that i can tell you this that yes that's where sanatan exists and sanatan does some changes and great stuff but it is inevitable that once people are more strong and powerful and uh, rich than before that they will form castes hmm. in any society of the world yeah so oh, this is an uh, this is this is inevitable it's basic social organization it's it will happen as long as human beings are there right name one country in the world which has been able to get rid of its uh, elitist cultures or customs hmm. or elitist people Yeah. Even even <coughs> USSR had its group of elites. Even right. China has its group of elites. You can never get rid of and and look at how they behave. They have rules of where they eat. They have rules regarding marriages. Yeah. So it's the same thing. It's not. It's nothing different from what you would see uh, dominant castes in India do. Hmm. Of course, we didn't like. Nobody took it to the extent of what the Nazis did and. like like uh, isabel wilkerson's horrible book uh, cast the source of our discontent which is not even a book it's a joke in my opinion it's an elaborate joke that people are taking seriously in the west because the west has never uh, the west is stupid enough to do, take it seriously hmm. so uh, we never killed we never exterminated people yeah like the nazis did we never yeah. them in chains and drag them from africa to do our menial yeah. labor yeah right the the west we we can't ca- call that caste that is a joke hmm. and or if we are calling that caste we shouldn't call indian one caste yeah right yeah so anyway yeah that's okay then all right that's that's the end of our discussion and we hope to be back with you soon because of uh, for for discussing that that speech uh by professor menon who is famous for that quote that kashmir has never been an integral part of india and that's a historical fact she has recently given a lecture which we will both together listen to and analyze and get important tidbits and uh, commentary from this sociologist himself uh so so let d- discuss this a bit what do you think of that view that uh, kashmir has never been an integral part of india and how mainstream is that in academia and why no that's definitely mainstream more or less in academia but hmm. uh, my view is not um you know it's not typical of what you would expect from more uh, hindutva leaning people my point hmm. was always kind of ambedkarite in that sense that okay. uh, if there is a place where uh, there is there is bound to be religious strife because one religion is incompatible with another hmm. then just divide the land it's like Hmm. amputate the leg that's been my view kashmir yeah, that, that is the panun kashmir, kashmir uh, movement as well that separate jammu yeah if 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 we are trying if our police forces are trying to suppress terrorists all the time 
Yeah. What will you do about economics and politics and religion? You can't yeah. do that. Yeah. Ambedkar predicted this in his yeah. book Thoughts on Pakistan, yeah. right? Uh, in great detail, he showed that you know if there is a concept of jihad which is mm. operating, yeah. can we actually say that um, there will be no jihad mm. in in a country that is uh, majority Hindu? Mm. Uh, and and where where the rulers are most likely to be Hindu or Christian or whatever, can there be no jihad? And even the West, look at the West right now, right? Yeah. The integrational mm. model fails. The assimilation model fails if you overdo it. Mm. So my view on Kashmir is quite different. I I don't I don't see value in land. I see value in people. Mm. And for me, giving up chunks of land like it's like if you if your leg is has to be amputated to save your body, well. I guess. Yeah. And okay, one one interesting question is coming from the audience, which I think will be very relevant uh, to your topic, is that uh, one, the other one question, do you think Jyoti Basu was a Chinese agent? Do you think Nehru collaborated with Chinese even after 1962? Like, was he a commie agent? Because uh, why is government not declassifying 1962? So what about Nehru and Jyoti Basu being uh, commie agents or Chinese agents? I don't know about Chinese, but they certainly had a love for USSR that I spoke about. Like, they they loved everything but India. That much I can. <laughs> that much is very clear to our audience, and you know. Why is also people, that so distinct about only Bengali commies? Why are they the only commies in the world who are not I nationalists? I would say that commies in every part of this country have been like. There are lesser commies in different, like for example, in Maharashtra, there was a very big communist movement. But Bal Thakre beat the crap out of them, right? Yeah. So no, I mean in, commies in the world in general. Why is Indian commie or then especially higher degree uh, in Bengali commies the anti-nationalism? No, 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 no. This is not anti. What happened is that this is your thinking about uh, a certain group of people who have been taught to think like that, and that hmm. too in a state which has no political. Like I said, there is no free market of politics here. Yeah. So think about all that, and then think that why a group of young young people or even slightly older people would, uh, you know, think like communists because hmm. that is what the elite is telling them to think, hmm. and you have hmm. no other view. Right. You can't read English, so you yeah. you can't watch Hollywood movies or you can't read English books by Sitaram Goel or anyone. Yeah. So you have no access to any other kind of literature. Yeah. Why but did the elite come up with this idea that we are going to be the only communists in the world? Who, who hate their country with all their guts? Everything about the country is bad, except probably the apparent secularism no, no, of Hinduism. I mean, Hinduism. they have this in common with American left, right? I mean, this is not true, a true. very unique thought process. The left talks about against mass production, but their whole ideology is mass produced. <laughs> like every leftist thinks similar that my country yeah. sucks, yeah. right? And some China, Cuba, USSR rocks. Yeah, but uh, are this... are uh, Cuban, Venezuelan, Russian, Chinese communists also like that? Well, are they communists? I mean, that's what they will ask. Yeah, I would say they are dictatorship of the. They are following the communist manifesto to a T, essentially, yeah. in many ways. Uh, although a lot of commies will get angry at me for saying that, but still, they are they are following a dictatorship of the proletariat. They were never liberal democrats to begin with, ever. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, if they do love, like they are forced to love their country. Mm. I don't think in Cuba or China you can get away by saying. Uh, you know, I don't think this regime is doing so well, and you know, you yeah. live to see the next day. Yeah. Okay. Last question. <laughs> last last counter for your views from our audience is that uh, the the view on Kashmir that if we then how much are we going to amputate because of a gangrene? <laughs> I I knew I knew this would come. <laughs> Obviously, of I, I this is my view. I I don't think. Um, I don't think it's very justified in life. Yeah, then wh where do we draw the line? Because Malda would probably very happily <laughs> go away with Bangladesh <laughs> if you if you take a survey. Yeah, uh, well, that's why Ambedkar proposed a complete uh, exchange of population. Is that feasible both. because of our porous borders? That I cannot say. I mean, hmm. if Pakistan borders could be sealed so well, if we could have like soldiers manning the LAC here, like hmm. minus 40 or something. Yeah. I don't know. Bangladesh border was never invested in by the government. I nobody see. thought of nobody thought of building a wall. So, yeah. Does does but, India benefit from uh, cheap Bangladeshi labor? That's why, and not from Pakistani labor who are even. Dumber. I don't think it's a capitalist argument to okay, begin okay. with. I I don't think it's like because we never really had a free market in Bengal hmm. uh, post the sixties and all. We hmm. don't. I don't see 
this has a more economic thing like the like the US. Hmm. This is yeah. more to do with this is more to do with demography change, which the communists always, which even leftists in the US think would benefit. Them, right. right. They want they want Mexican voters, so they bring in Mexicans. Right. The CPI yeah. wanted Muslim voters, so they brought in more Muslims. It's like that. It's it's not about always about the economy. Hmm. Because wo to tha hi nahi. Matlab, economy to waise hi ho gaya tha after the 70s. Yeah. So <laughs> who will employ the cheap laborers? That's true. They'll they'll go to Delhi and, and sit in for uh, CA protests. They still have, ah, a, have a job. That is do. possible. That yeah. is a possibility. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Professor Christoph lies a lot. Thanks a lot for joining our live stream. Uh, thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. We are going okay. to come back soon I... with, with uh, viewing Professor Menon's uh, lecture and, and discuss other stuff from Bengal as well. Yep. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. And uh, it was a good one. It was a good yes, one. Yes, it was it was a lot of fun. And bye bye guys. Thank you for joining the live stream. Good night.